today we continue our citizen sleeper journey. Wow! Amazing, right? We're going to citizen sleeper it up. I think we'll finish main game today. Uh, I'm sure we, there's some achievements we missed first playthrough, but uh, we're gonna finish the main game today, most likely, because, uh... Gardening Lady, what was her name? Rico is, like, the only thing left. I forget how loud that is. And there's DLC, cool stuff to be. No achievements for that, though. Look at that loudin. Never gets old, right? Never gets old. Never gets old. We wipe on. Isn't it interesting how unoptimized games are on Xbox One S? They always seem to take forever to load. I don't think they account for anybody using an Xbox One S, the peasant. They always take longer to load. What's going on? What's been happening? We're waiting for this thing, aren't we? Gardener's gift. The seed is planted and Rico is an attentive mother to it. What future is forming there? I don't know. It only takes two clubhead caps to get a, a, a stabilizer. So, yeah. That's pretty good. I'm pretty set for stabilizer now. like nothing else to do I don't think bring it all the way back over here there's always data that you can get they always, they always give it to you in case so you can sell it for money if you need it never run out this one. There you go. I'll help you guys out. Uh, oh, right. That one's a clock one, so it doesn't fill up that bar. Everybody. You can buy scrap, huh? How would I buy scrap? I did want to see what cooking those mushrooms did. I have no idea what that does. It doesn't have a predictive reasoning thing. I don't have enough upgrade points for everything. Can you not fully upgrade everything in one playthrough then? You need a new game plus to upgrade everything? I can upgrade just about everything, but... There's like three plus twos up there. That's nine points right there. You probably can't fully upgrade everything in one playthrough. Unless I missed like nine other uh, quest lines. All I got is Rika's right there and then the, the DLC one. Hmm. Look at all the ones I've done. I've done so many quests. Uh. I don't think there's anything else to do. We gotta feed our cat though. That's a, that's a requirement. Feed the cat -o. The best cat. 
Whatever happened to Castor? I didn't talk to him since uh, Lem and Mina. Oh, it's Matsutake I have there? Ooh. I thought I had those were clubhead ones. Maybe I can try cooking them then. Let's see what happens. Oh, just to get some energy. So, oh, so I'm cooking food for myself. Ah, okay. Way to cook food for yourself without paying for it. Makes sense, I suppose. Nothing else ever happened here. It's just black. Hmm. There's nothing to do, is there? Guess I could just whir for use up my dice while I'm waiting. I could forage for fungus. Like some more grove spores for more mushrooms. How many do I need? I think I only need three though. Reroll him. Ooh, that was a good reroll. I guess we go sleep and get mushrooms tomorrow. Let's go. Oops. Club head and the one the I got one of each type, didn't I? Let me see. Now I got replant. You're back to wait on. Ha! I rolled and got a one again. That's about right. Yeah. Should like suck up all your energy right here. It's not bad. If I steal the harvest once the red circle fills, it'll be just like the uh, tower and it disappears forever. You eliminate all goodwill. I'm a scrap repairer. A gatherer of scrap.
Mm. I know that one's too risky to use the two, uh... Pretty much you're at a point, you can just do what you want. Oh, we're waiting for that uh, thing to finish. We're gonna grow some corn or some something tasty. How dare you? Actually, if I do sunbathe with like a six, what do I get? Wow, pretty good. Not bad. There you suck up my energy. That's like my energy. How dare you? Alright. Well, that's all I can do is rest up. Properly here. Now you had to do a thing. You had to do a thing, huh? A thing, huh? You had to do a thing, huh? Congrats on doing your thing. What's up? What's happening? How's going, though? But how you doing to that? Well, I made that one of three. That's pretty good. We're waiting for our stuff to finish. Looks like it'll be finished tomorrow. Isn't that fun? I think of something more entertaining. Hmm. I recommend. Yeah, hold on, hold on a second. I've got mushrooms to get. things with a bit of help. Hmm. Let's see. I guess we'll see what we grew. Let's see what we grew. We grew some chocolate trees. They're wet. Are they a tree? I'm not sure. We're gonna have chocolate now. Maybe we'll grow some corn. Some potatoes. 
Do I really see? No. I just pretend. To see. Actually, like this the whole time, eyes closed. Rico has something in her hands when you enter the lab. It looks like a knotted twist of woody stems. A ring about the circumference of a human head. Consisting of a single stalk at one side and a branched woven network at the other. Huh? You what? As you approach, she holds it up. And then the lights of the lab, it looks like... A crown! Rico finishes your thought. She smiles and shakes her head in disbelief. Is that what grew? It's not, that's not, that's not food. It is. I came to the plant this morning, and this loop was all that was there. She points to a lump on the edge of the ring. The seed grew right back into itself, twisted up out of the soil. That being you encountered in the cloud, as you call it, was it wearing one of these? She eyes you suspiciously, still unsure if she is somehow embroiled in an overlong prank. Uh, the thing that planted the seed? I have no fucking clue. Don't work like that! You sighs. Perhaps wearing was the wrong word. She places the object on the bench and shuffles to her analysis terminal, her face lit by its amber lights in the dim corner of the lab. Well, it isn't exactly a plant, anyway. Not from what I can tell. It gives you a serious look. No leaves. No chloroplasts. Well, no what? Just a series of filaments encased in cellulose walls. Uh, how did it grow? It seems the seed contained everything it needed. A self-contained entity. Nothing less. He beckons you over. But that isn't the good part. Look at this. You see a cross-section scan of the crown. It's layers of plant-like structure on full, full view until you reach the center. There, instead of xylem and phloem for transporting nutrients, something branched and woven glints. Uh, are those wires? He laughs. I'm not sure whether to say yes or no here. These are not wires, like those in an electrical system. No, but they are filaments of a conductive material. So, yes? He leans closer to the screen. But you see those branches? They remind me of dendrites, of neurons. He rubs her eyes. Which is frankly ridiculous. You look back at the crown on the table as Rico fusses over the scans, and you suddenly realize what it reminds you of. You remember signing the forms, the walk to the sleeper tanks, the cold metal floor. Then you remember the crown they fitted you with, the branching structure of wires and pads. No, not a crown. They called it an interface. Oh. The tool of your emulation, your transference from neurons to electrons. An interface. That is your gift from Gardner. You turn back to Rico. It's an interface. Rico looks at you, puzzled. Something clicks in her mind. Perhaps something she heard from the sleeper she had helped all those cycles ago. She starts talking, partly to you, partly to herself. If the club heads were made for you, then this too could be made for you, for your frame. She shuffles over quickly to the interface, a word that is stuck to this strange branched object quickly in your mind. You are right. That entity. It is the entity I have been looking for. She shuffles quickly to the crown. They are the entity which is controlling the Greenway, which has been maintaining it, supporting it, and has been guiding it for all these decades. Oh. So wait, you do two purple winks and then you minus one? They're like, two is too many. It's gotta be just one. What are those notes about anyway, huh? Suspicious. Suspicious. He stops to catch her breath. They want to talk with you. Rico leads you to a seat. I will be here, sleeper. If something happens, if you wish me to remove the crown, the interface, just squeeze. She grips your hand tightly. You meet her eyes, clouded with age, 
but bright with the thrill of new discoveries. Then she places the interface on your head and everything blinks out. Uh, we're going to the clouds! And the data ghost of the eye. Back into the river, back into the dark flow. But something is different now. You are no longer pushed, no longer blocked and buffeted by the swarm, by the storm. Instead, it flows around you. You move and it parts, letting you pass. Something else resists, but gives it gives easily enough. You look back and see your body. You have left it behind. Somewhere, Rico's voice is talking to you, asking you questions. It is excited, eager, desperate to know what lies on the other side, what the entity has to say to you. You realize how long she has waited for this moment, for the moment of meeting between the inhabitants of the Greenway and its protector, and yet she is still on the outside. You shake off the sadness. You will be her eyes. Then you see the figure, Gardener, out in the storm, planting. Oh yeah, it's that weird thing we saw before. Garden lore, huh? The thing that looks like broccoli or something. Ingrown farm administrator. Wow! So, like, you have hunter hunts, killer kills, gardener gardens, right? You know? It's a program designed to garden. You don't know? Haven't seen anything to write about? Oh. <gasps> You have it? Well then what what's the note the emote for then? Are you, you're not reviewing, are you? Can't believe this. How dare you review your notes? It takes less than a moment to reach them. You have never felt so free. This is how Navigator must have felt, released from their prison. This, you think, is what it feels like to be in the place you were built to inhabit. Gardener does not turn at your approach. They go on planting, but their voice whispers in the waters like a sharply rising current. Hmm, what's this gardener bush supposed to be? Hmm. You grew the gift. Their speech hisses around you. Good, I am glad. I wanted to meet you, or who are you? I mean, I, I think we know who they are, but, you know, let's, let's, let's be polite. Who are you? Gardener is a good name. You chose it well. I will grow into it. Uh-oh. How does it feel to be free of your seed? They stoop to plant again. My seed? That in which you were contained, from which you will grow. You mean like the frame, the body? There was some disagreement, continues Gardner, as if you were picking up on a long-held conversation. With the others, they felt you were a danger, but they are always cautious, especially the fungi. They like old loam, known knowns, wide and stable networks. The fungi were cautious? What the fuck? Mostly, yes. Although there are many among their number who favor short growth cycles, thick nutrient veins, and sudden shifts. He gestures out into the storm, and though you cannot see them, you feel presences all around, sensing this audience with great interest. After all, they understood that it was I who made them their crowns, and without them they would not have joined the chorus. So, they see that it is only fair that you get your chance to join, too. Ah? Uh -huh. Hey, Ivor, what's up? What's happening? How's it going? How you doing to that? You have something I have to be ready for, of course, and you're not ready? Oh, you gotta prepare. All right, all right. Uh... Join? Yes. Become part of this. Gardner stoops again. We are millions, and we grow. I hope you understand. I am unused to speaking to your kind. It has been many cycles since my last conversation. I think it was with Chief Executive Trellick himself. Who? You look around, and you see it. Every growing thing, every non-human being in the Greenway, is here. 
They are networked, connected, branched and linked by this strange being, this artifact of the old station. The impossible dream of a senile farm administration AI, a living network. You could dissolve here, you realize, free of that decaying body. You wouldn't need to be a person. Why would you, among all these other minds? You turn away from Gardner for a moment and look back at your body. A tiny hairline thread connects it to you. You hear Rico's voice again, still asking, still checking in. Huh, interesting. That's supposed to be her or the gardener. I think it's her. Are you okay, sleeper? Can you hear me? Say something. What are they saying, sleeper? Are you still there, sleeper? Something in you sighs a long sigh. A sigh that speaks of an exhaustion beyond tiredness. An exhaustion rooted deep inside you. It stems from the effort of answering questions of answering problems, of getting up and breathing each cycle. That's called life, bro. But something else resists the sigh. A yearning, a sense of distance, a desire to squeeze that hand that holds you for its warmth, its blood, its complexity. To make a gesture that says, I'm still here. I'm still alive. I'm with you. The two ideas spin within you, making you nauseous. If you break that thread, you will be free. Free to dissolve here, to grow strange and beautiful among a million others. Ah. If you follow it, if you squeeze Rico's hand, you will wake up, back in that dying body, with all the pain and warmth that entails. So it's going to give me a choice to stay here in the cloud or go back. What it sounds like. Now is the moment to choose. Break the thread, follow the thread. So if you break it, you stay in cloud with all your new cloud buddies. If you follow, you go back to Rico. Um, I'm gonna presume that there are achievements for both of these endings, both of these choices, just like uh Lemon Mina and what was the other one? Ankita and Bliss. And for one of those choices, you go back to before the choice. And for the other choice, it's like, hey, you're staying on the station. You got stuff to do. So here, the choice that will put you before the choice is probably break the thread because you're leaving. Just like the other choices where it puts you back before the choice. You're, tech you're not leaving the station technically, but you're still leaving. And follow would be stay. The uh, if I pick the wrong one, I get to do a whole new playthrough. But I'm pretty sure break is the leave. It's the one that makes sense. So we're gonna break first. Goodbye, world. We're gonna stay with our cloud buddies. We're gonna stay with our cloud buddies. We got new friends now. We don't need some old gardening lady, right? <laughs> sure, sometimes you need a hand. Just one? Prof taste. Break the thread! You reach down and pinch the thread. The finality of this moment descends on you. Oh, you get to make a second choice. Sorry, break it! You pluck the thread like a string. It snaps. Nothing changes. You stand at a point of stillness. No, you don't stand. You have no legs, no body. You are a point of stillness, a point in the flow. Your mind fizzes. A thousand new shoots break through the soil. They entwine with you, embrace you. Some part of you decays while something else feeds from that decay. The spores of your new thoughts float away in shifting clouds and settle in new soil. Then you see Gardner out there, still planting. And they stop, like an old man resting in the fields. And they turn to face you. And you join the chorus. And together you sing the song of growing things. I knew it! 
Bro, vast and strange achievement unlocked. Accepted the offer, broke the thread, and joined the chorus. Wow, now we live the rest of our existence in the clouds. We basically become like an AI in a cloud, right? This is like uploading your brain to the internet. Even after you're dead and gone, your your brain is still on the internet. It's that kind of thing. Until uh, the internet dies, I guess. And then you truly die. Achievement unlocked! I know, right? We found another ending! Don't ask me, look it up. What do I don't need to do that. I picked the wrong thing. All I gotta do is do an entirely new playthrough and just zip through it. Now you're ready? Oh, are you? But it seems pretty clear to me that break was leave and the uh, follow was stay. Because how are you supposed to continue the game if you break the thread to your body, right? can't go back to the station and continue if you break. How many endings are there? At least six. That was the fifth one. We're gonna go do number six now. See, it put me back at the, at the uh, title screen. So that was the leave one. I told you, I, I, I'm super knowledgeable. I got this game figured out. I'm good. Yeah. What's up? What's happening? How's it going, by the way, Mexican boy? How you doing tonight? Hope you're doing awesome tonight on this Friday night. We're pretty much done with the main game here. We're going to do this other ending where we follow the thread. And we're going to, uh... Do the DLC for this game. If I didn't care about DLC, I could probably finish this game and get any achievements I missed on my first playthrough today, but... I want to read through the DLC! It's a good game. I'm sure the DLC is cool, too. See, it put me back before the choice. Oh, it didn't save me growing the spores. Let's replant the spores. You're gonna watch the new Godzilla movie tomorrow, so that's exciting. Dang, how many Godzilla movies are there? Like 2,500 Godzilla movies. Hmm. Really? You can see it as well as I. Rika looks past the twist of stems at you. And this is what it appears to be. He points to a lump on the edge of the ring. The seed grew right back into itself, twisted up out of the soil. Hmm. No. She sighs. I suppose that would be too easy. She smiles to herself. A root crown. She places the object on the bench and shuffles to her analysis terminal, her face lit by its amber light in the dim corner of the lab. Really? They really only change a little bit. Filaments? See? That's why I like you, sleeper. You are so good at spotting the unusual details. She beckons you over. Look at this. You see a cross-section scan of the crown. It's layers of plant-like structures on full view. Like, they only change, like, the first half of the paragraph, depending on which choice you make. The second half here is the same. about metal? Metal? In part, yes. They seem to contain metal, perhaps absorbed from the station itself. She leans closer to the screen. But you see those branches? They remind me of dendrites, of neurons. Oh, neurons? It interface. Never mind. Oh, they're not ready anymore. Good. I wanted to meet you. Then we are the same. Both eager shoots seeking one another. Whoa. Good. That is good. 
They press the seed into the loamy depths. I don't understand. Neither did they, but time is on our side, and time is an excellent method of persuasion. Wow. You made more crowns? I made them all. Gardner moves away a little, looking for another planting spot. It was so lonely here, but before long I found them and began to let them in. Ah, the gardener was just lonely, so he grew some communication devices so he could get some friends. This time we're going to follow. Fun fact of the nice, there's, there's a town in Greece named Propelia. Yeah, I know that. Isn't that cool? No, Dolby. Around 125,000 people live in Propelia. That's because I'm cool. I'm a cool town. I'm a cool city. I'm, I'm, I'm hip. Did I eat 125,000 people? Um. That's classified information. No, is it not ready? Oh, okay, okay. Now we shall follow the thread. Your eyes track the thread across the whirling dark back to your body. This choice, you realize, will not be presented again. Well, we're still going to do it. You don't look back at Gardner. You don't dare risk it. Instead, you follow the thread delicately, carefully, like a diver following their lifeline back to the surface. The river whirls around you, but it doesn't pull. It isn't jealous. Neither does it understand. It is, after all, just a river. It isn't a person, a flesh and blood person with wants, with desires, with the capacity for love and hate. It doesn't understand you, and you don't understand it. Though you don't focus on it, you don't think about it, on what feels like such a long journey back through the dark, you set your mind on eyes instead, on hands, things you can focus on, hold on to. And then, after an age of crossing, you are there, settling back into the chair, into a body in a chair, and the overwhelming sensations that come with being a living thing with a rich and detailed sensorium. For a moment, you feel like you have made a terrible mistake. Why, who would choose this weight, this anxiety, this deep well at the center of existence? But then you feel it. Rico's hand gripped hard around yours, trembling a little. Sweating a little. Rico's hand with its brittle bones and crumpled skin. Rico's hand. And in that moment, you understand why you made this choice. And then you squeeze Rico's hand and you wake up. Aww. Warmth and light achievement unlocked. Turned away and followed the thread back home. Aww. That one's much sappier. Happy. I think that's the best ending right there. Out of all the ones I've seen. Best one right there! But you, I guess you're ready for the end. It won't be the end, even. I don't know what that is. Oh, <gasps> Yeah, you didn't play all the DLC, did you? you even, so some of the content will be new even for you. Although I don't think we'll get to the new content today. I doubt the DLCs are that short. That was nice yet sad. Sad for Gardner, I guess. But he's got plenty of friends. He'll be fine. We went back to being alive. Another achievement unlocked. That's right. That was the sixth ending. Out of 20, right?
I woke up. That was so sad, wasn't it? So sappy. Ophelia. Dope. Bet this will put us back on the station. Yep, it will. Because it's doing loading instead of going back to title. We have no friends, no likes. It's a game. How dare you! Dare you remind people it's a game? It needs a bunch of zeros and ones. There, bunch of code. I believe you. Nothing really. <sighs> yeah, that's the best end. Is it time to look at the achievements now? I think I've done just about everything. I would consider this the end of the first playthrough. We'll see if we, we, we manage to get them all or miss them. Leaper? Rico's voice comes wavering through the dark. Are you still with me? You sit up, in the lab a bright green glare that fades as you gather yourself. I'm here. Rico smiles. Good. She squeezes your hand. I thought you'd left me for a moment. What? She pauses. Ooh. She smiles. Tell me about it. Tell me everything. Tell her the truth. Tell her it was nothing. That'd be, that'd be fucking mean to tell her it was nothing after everything you've been through. Tell her the truth. You tell Rico everything. You tell her about the gardener. That strange farm administrator AI that has grown to be so much more. About the chorus. That impossible configuration of networked plants. And finally about the choice the gardener offered you. She listens attentively, but her responses are hard to read. And you wonder if she might have made a different decision had she been in your place. Thank you, Sleeper, for telling me. I know it isn't easy to say such things. People so often do not wish to hear strange truths. He looks away. He did the double thing. And thank you for returning to me, though I know you had your own reasons. He squeezes your hand reassuringly. Oh. Something passes between you then, a kind of shared sadness for the impossible choice. The choice to escape your body, or to stay and suffer it. Her smile is warm and generous, and whatever the wisdom of your choice, you are glad to feel welcome in this moment. In this place. Then suddenly, she stands and walks a little away, as if trying to escape an unpleasant thought. You worry that she knows all too well what it takes to make a choice like you did. Rico sighs. Oh, sleeper. Do you plan to stay in the commune with us? Um, uh, uh, for a while. I'm glad to hear it. Rico crosses back over to you and takes one of your hands in both of hers. Ifa needs new blood if it wants to survive. And... She squeezes. You are a good friend. A feeling is mutual. Who the hell would stay silent right now? Well, don't let me keep you. Rika waves you away and limps back to her terminal. As she does, you notice the crown in her hand, and she places it on the bench with great care. You can't help but feel a little curious about what she intends to do with it. Then you are out, breathing the air of the greenway, fresh as a spring morning. The dappled light makes a patchwork of the greening landscape, and you walk into it, sensing the movements of the gardener's chorus all around. And you are glad to be here, in this strange and beautiful place, a little longer. Oh, Adorable! I think that's like everything, though. I don't think there's anything else to do but the DLC, which is right here. Womp womp! Womp 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 Just sitting and thinking, preparing. Preparing, huh? Preparing! What are you preparing for? It's like there's nothing else anywhere, I don't think. It. Let's see, achievementals.
It's about it. Hmm. Looks like I got the 24 out of 27 achievements. So I missed three. They're all missable. Oh, they're all marked as missable ones. I probably will have to do another playthrough for those three. Hey, woo up! What's up? What's happening? How's it going? Won't that be exciting? Have a stomach flu, you think? Ooh, that sucks. Been there before. Uh, uh, it sucks. Survive! Survive! You must survive! Well, I saw rest uh, whenever you can, anyway. <laughs> it's really hard to get any rest. And you have stomach bug issues like that. Survive! Survive! Don't forget to stay hydrated. Survive! Ready to sleep whenever you can, when you're not in the bathroom. Survive! Survive. Pro survive! Ooh, hydrate. Hydrate, okay. Stretch two? Ah! Ugh. Ugh. Another four hours? Four hours isn't too bad if you're sick, though, honestly. Four hours uninterrupted? Oh, yeah, that uh, sounds like fun there. Survive, Woo Up! Survive! Well, let's see. Welcome to Episode Flux. Episode Flux is the first of three episodic updates to Citizen Sleeper, telling the story of the refugee flotilla which has arrived at the Eye. All three episodes, Flux, Refuge, and Purge, are now available. Completing the Supply G-Rolls action will begin the episode, but be aware that it is intended for late gameplay. I'm definitely at late gameplay, wouldn't you say? Nothing interesting or productive, I guess. I mean, what qualifies as interesting or productive for you? It depends on your interpretation. Yes, yeah, so you said you needed to survive. I was just helping you. Oh, you were helping me with the hydrate and stretch. That was very helpful. I feel much more alive now. Let's get this uh, DLC party started. Ash sees you coming up the broken spoke and waves you to, uh, into the cavernous bay of the climbing briar. Whoa, she does, huh? Oh yeah, I forgot all about these people. I think I saw them in like the first or second stream and then... Uh, figured out it was DLC and I was like, well, I'm not talking to these people again for forever. Now the time has arrived. I'm really interesting and productive. That's goddamn right. Something is interesting and productive. That, that can be subjective, though. Peak, huh? Cautious XP, X, XPR spacer. And then there was the lady, right? Uh... Oh yeah, Esh, right? You came! Peek smiles as you walk into the climbing briar's cargo hold behind a gloomy Esh. Oh yeah, her! Stubborn XXPR spacer. Stubborn. They brought mushrooms. Esh tosses the mushroom caps onto a crate, raising her eyebrows at Peek. Peek gives her a look. Thank you, sleeper. I pick up one, or pick one up and sniff at it. Are these... edible? Why would I bring mushrooms that aren't edible? Try it! 
He squints at you in the mushroom before delicately putting it back down. I'll wait. He doesn't want to try ra mush raw mushrooms. He wants them cooked in a meal. We're not so used to fresh produce. Besh is securing crates as she speaks and doesn't look up. Hawthorne doesn't have much in the way of farming. Hawthorne? The installation we grew up on. Esh wipes off her hands on a rag. XPR loves to name their property after natural things, but that's about as far as their relationship with plant life goes. XPR? <laughs> that mean. Is this an interrogation? She glares. Either way, we are done with that place, which is all you need to know. But I wanted to know what XPR stood for. And <laughs> No answer, never mind. Ooh. I was really goddamn right, Pro. Yeah! Esh leans back against the crate she was securing. We are going to need more than a few mushrooms if we want to help those refugees, though. Uh, hmm. What did they need? Food, water, components, a whole lot of things. Esh stands and walks over to the mushrooms you brought, placing them into a small container with care. The problem isn't just getting supplies, it's getting them through to the ships. Hmm. Can't you just fly around? And get the briar seized for breaching quarantine? No thanks. He laughs. We were lucky we got here before the cordon was set up. That's the only reason we are on this side. Uh, why is there a quarantine? That's a good question. Eek jumps in. The eye has a closed loop life like support system. Or a closed loop life support system. Just like any orbital installation. Any unfamiliar illness or significantly increased strain on life support could cause a cascading collapse in its systems. Hmm. Good point. Esh scoffs. Are we making excuses for these bureaucrats now? Eek turns. We are being realistic, Esh. But these people aren't an increased strain. They are living people. Esh stares at you. Even calling them refugees is just a way of turning a lot of scared, desperate people into a single monolithic group. <sighs> Power of labels. Esh slides the container full of mushrooms into one of the cargo holds racks. Look, as much as I'd like to chat, we've still got a lot of space to fill in this hold. Though, if you're going to help... I think Esh is trying to say we need your help. And quickly, Peek says, glancing at her. Like, like, he's like, he's like, he's like, Can't you ask for help nicely? Can't you be nicer? Why can't you just be like, oh, Two mushrooms? Shouldn't you just be more grateful? Pruffle stare. Wait, pruffle staring seems pretty interesting and productive. I think that's a good answer, Dobie. <laughs> pruffle wink. The refugees behind the cordon. They won't be able to hold out indefinitely. We need to get supplies to them in the next 12 cycles or... Esh steps forward. Or Haven Age will have to bear the responsibility for whatever happens next. What can I do? There's three things we still need to secure. Water, food, and scrap components for ship repairs. As gestures to the storage containers around the hold. Water we can find a way to source. Or, my preference, just siphon off from the underground reservoirs in the Greenway. He raises their eyebrows. Ash. She ignores them. For food, things could be tricky. Those mushrooms are delicious, I'm sure, but no way we can get enough volume to feed a flotilla. However, I saw an algae stack on the way over. If we can get access... Not more stealing, Ash. Peek sighs. Oh my gosh, stealing. I didn't say steal. She stares at them indignantly. If we can get access, we can work the stack, harvest some algae for the flotilla. The stacks churn out vast quantities in short timescales. 
And the repair components? Peek asks tentatively. Esh smiles. Just look around you, Peek. This whole place is made of scrap. She shoots you a glance. And I'm sure the sleeper has their sources. They can bring them right here. We get everything before time runs out. Perfect. We get most of it? Also good. Either way, in 12 cycles, I'm going to take what we have and go. But how will you get through? S shoulders a container. I thought I'd leave that up to you, Peek. They flinch. Are you serious? Esh, I know we said we would help the flotilla, but at what point... They stop, take a breath. Take this seriously, Esh. I don't know the first thing about breaching a quarantine cordon. Maybe not. Esh looks at you. But they might. They slipped out from an SNR facility, didn't they? Plus, they've been here longer than us. That's true. You are always trying to get me to ha find help. Well, here it is. She gestures at you. Help. He glances between the two of you. I swear to... They sigh. I need to think this one through. Meet me at the cordon in a couple of cycles, sleeper. Maybe we can figure something out. Meanwhile, Esh meets your eye. You can help me acquire the supplies. Discreetly. He smiles. We have to keep this quiet. Keep Haven Age out of the loop. Once they get suspicious, this is over for all of us. This all suddenly seems a little too real. Too dangerous. You've only just found your feet on the eye. This is not a time for causing trouble. Come find us. We'll be out there trying to pull this all together. Esh goes back to the or goes to the back of the hold to start packing another container. Peek, come help me. He glances back at her. Sleeper, look, we didn't choose this either. They lower their voice. Help us finish this. We've set up a base camp on the broken spoke. You are welcome to rest there in any of the cots while we work on this. They smile. We are in this together. Peek! Esh shouts, and they walk back to the, into the hold to help with the container. As you leave the climbing briar, you look out at the broken edge of the eye's ring, where Haven Age's cordon blinks with tiny red lights. What are you getting yourself into? Oh no, what am I getting myself into? Is that the cordon? Meeting peak. Peek asks you to meet them at the cordon. You hope they have a plan to cross because this place seems imposing. I don't. Get fucking lucky. It's our 12 cycles. Eight, huh? Okay, I can do that. Wrap for the flotilla. One of the three things the flotilla, flotilla needs are components for repairs. There's a lot of ships, which means a lot of scrap components. I don't have eight. I can only give eight at one time, huh? Briar's hold. The flotilla needs food, water, and components. You might not be able to get all of them, but Esh will take what you can get. Eek's plan. All the supplies in the world are nothing without a plan to get them to the flotilla. That's Peek's part in this. Esh is run. The clock is running. In 12 cycles, Esh will make her run to the flotilla. The better prepared she is, the better the result will be. I suppose. Briar base camp. Wait, what? I get a new house? Spacer staging ground. I get the cot. Don't I need something interesting to stare at? I mean, whatever you happen to be looking at is automatically interesting by default, right? Alright. I could end my cycle, but I have one die. I could try to get scrap. Got one. Those are some good dice. Is 
looking around getting some extras. No. Terrible re-roll before I re-roll you. Well, let's re-roll this too. Wow, we got a two. We re-rolled the two and do a two. Ten out of ten. Woo! Amazing. That's it. These components should be enough to recover most of the basic repairs the flotilla needs. You hope. You look over the pile of scrap components lying in the briar. You look around. The bay is empty. Esh and Peak either elsewhere on the station or on the bridge a couple of levels up. You begin sorting through the pile, separating out useful components and boxing them by use. You don't recognize everything you find, but before long you get into the rhythm of sorting. As you do, your mind starts to drift, your attention being drawn into the dark corners of the bay. The briar is in surprisingly good condition, considering that Hawthorne and XPR must have been operating it for decades by now. The marks of care are everywhere, from the delicate patch jobs, polished to meld into the original finish, or the carefully bound wiring running through custom trunking. Esh loves this ship. That much is clear. Something catches your eye in one of the dark corners, a matte black stack of crates you hadn't spotted before. They are sleek and compact tucked away behind some of the bigger, more worn containers. I mean, I'm curious, so I must investigate and find the bomb or whatever. You push the components away and go over to the sleek crates. You run your hands across their textured surface, but there is little hint of what lies inside in the opaque metallic casing. Then you see it, a yellow symbol, embossed into the, onto the far side of the crate, a universal sigil used by spacers, corporations, and manufacturers alike. It's one you have seen throughout your time as a sleeper. It's meaning all too familiar. Explosive contents. I was joking about the bomb. I was fucking joking, game. Why you do this to me? Fucking called it. You hear a hiss, and Esh comes up through the bay's lock. She barely registers your presence, nodding at you as she passes. Sleeper. She busies herself with some task at the back of the bay. Uh, ask about the crates. I like to get myself in trouble. Esh doesn't turn around from whatever she is busy with. Just more supplies, sleeper. Like everything else here. You can't think of anything else to ask, but sense that the atmosphere has now somehow shifted. You quickly finish up the sorting and slip out, waving goodbye to her back as you do. What next? Hmm? There's nothing else to do? I guess I have to wait for the cordon thing then. What should we do with R2? Hmm? What's this? Reservoir S3, water storage and processing? Oh! Act sensors? The reservoir is monitored by a web of sensors. Hacking them will reduce the alert level of the system and keep you from getting locked out. That will go for Haven Age alert, though. Haven Age have installed a complex sensor array to monitor the reservoir. Trip this and the whole place will go into lockdown. Or siphon water. The only way for Esh to get enough water together is to siphon it directly from the station's reservoirs. Haven Age will not be pleased. Why is the hacking sensor safe by the siphoning water's dangerous? Water for the flotilla. Esh needs tanks and tanks of water if she hopes to help with the, the flotilla. Anything less is worthless to her. Hmm. I don't really want to do that with a two. Or any, like, thing else over here? I wasn't expecting that water one down here. Maybe there's a food one over here. Doesn't look like it. I 
Let's check up here. Nope. Dot, dot, dot. I know, right? What are the chances I would roll the same number I just had? Isn't that lame? Oh, I didn't notice this one either. Oh, that's the food one. Algae stack. I thought algae farm. Negotiate access. The algae stack is controlled by a small collective of farmers. If you want to use it, you'll need to persuade them. Hmm... Algae access. Much to Esh's frustration, you'll have to pay or talk your way into the, using the algae stack to farm food for the refugees. Let's try it. Wow, I had a four and I still got negative outcome. Thanks, game. Thanks, game. Hold on, to uh, uh, take a nap. Go to sleep. Those aren't the best dice, but... As you leave, you find a note pinned on the outside of the door. It reads, Sleeper, there's something you need to see. Meet me at the cordon as soon as you can. Just keep heading around the ring until you hit the flotilla. I'll be waiting. Peek. You pocket the note and look, glance around the corridor. Looks like you are doing this. Time to make a plan. Wow. Peek, cautious spacer. Sleeper! Pete catches your attention from the shadowy corner they were leaning against. Any trouble getting up here? Mm, this place is huge! It certainly is. Dave and Age have been busy. Come, take a look at this. They beckon you over to a nearby window, which looks across the ruined ring to the blinking red lights of the Haven Age cordon. Cordon's temporary structures, a net of metal struts meant to detect and dissuade any ships from entering or leaving the flotilla, jut out into the black. And all around, the tugs flit, securing them in place and tending to the red blinking drones that demark the quarantine. It's an impressive and worrying sight. What do you think? Uh-oh. I misspelled Peek's name here. F12. I forgot the E on the end. Literally unplayable now. Peek interrupts your thoughts. How would you get through? Hmm. I'm taking some notes there. That better be an F12 note. It is pretty impressive, the small amount of uh, typos I've found in this game since it's like pretty much entirely text. Pretty impressive. What else could it be? Hmm, one wonders. Hmm. Great a distraction, maybe? It's not a bad idea, but what kind of distraction is big enough to get everyone to look away from a ship as big as the Briar? He squints at the red lights. Surely they spot and seize the ship. He turns away from the window and rubs their forehead. Esh has really wrapped us up in something hot here, hasn't she? The question is spoken under their breath, and they don't seem to expect an answer. The silence grows. Why are you helping the flotilla? Beak looks up. You don't think it's a worthy cause? They pause. We ran into them when we escaped Hawthorne. 
Esh insisted we investigate their distress signal. I'm not saying we shouldn't have. Peek stares out the window at the distant blinking lights of the arrived ships. It's just... Peek brushes back their hair. Forget it. Let's focus on the plan. They flash you an easy smile. It doesn't matter why. We are the ones who are going to help them. The way I see it, there are three parts to making it through that cordon. They gesture out of the... They gesture out the window at the strange structure. Deception, distraction, and speed. We'll need all of them for a clean passage through. Deception means tricking the cordon security into thinking that we are meant to be there. Maybe a tug escort would work? Anything that makes the briar look official. Distraction, meanwhile, will be about diverting attention so that no one looks too hard at what the briar is doing. If we can create a gap in the cordon scanning and deterrent systems, that should keep them busy. Finally, speed will mean making sure the briar is ready to roll. Perhaps we can do a little work on the ship to get her ready? Es surely wouldn't mind. They lean back from the window. How does that sound? I mean, what are your other options other than what you just mentioned? If you're going to help them anyway. Don't you just? Don't you just? Uh, excellent. Call it. He grins. Don't get too excited. There's a lot to get sorted before we can make the run. He looks down at their slate. Ten cycles left. They glance out of the window at the cordon nervously. Ten cycles to gather the supplies and to prep this plan. It's tight. Very tight. Peek looks at you. If this goes wrong, Peek sighs. Just get out, okay? They squeeze your shoulder. I'll follow Esh anywhere, but you, you don't need to get dragged down with us. It won't come to that. Peek brightens up a little. Of course, but just keep it in mind. Let's get to it. Peek stretches. I'll tell Esh about the improvements to the briar and the rest. Let's explore the cordon as best we can and look for openings. I have no idea what guardian angel sent you to sl to what guardian angel sent you to us, sleeper. Peek smiles, but I'm very glad they did. You drive this word. Oh my gosh. The cordon, Haven Age Quarantine. Blend in with the crew. One thing about being a sleeper is people always assume you are working, so blending in with the tug crews shouldn't be too tough. Wait, really? If you're a robot, you're always working, apparently. You're never just a regular old person chilling out, having fun. Always working. Ruffles stare. Ruffles stare to you, too. Intercept comms. The cordon buzzes with radio transmissions and data packets. Intercepting them will help you help give you a chance. Give you wait. Will help give you a sense of how things run here. Cordon intel. You and Peek need to get a sense of how the Haven Age operation works before you can prepare your plan to slip through it. Engage versus interface. I like how I got more from the plus one interface one than the engage plus two. So that's what the plus numbers mean. I only just realized that. That's how much more it increases your dice. I am extremely observant, as you can tell. I only just realized the dice thing. The plus twos and stuff. Plus ones is how much more it increases your dice. It only took me this long. Notice. I'm a goddamn genius.
Hmm. Oh, I wasted that. I don't like reduce the saving age. That doesn't fill this. Dang it. I'm a goddamn genius. I got negative outcome twice in a row with this? Fuck off. Fuck off, guy. Maybe, did you only just notice that? Yep. I had no idea why I was getting plus one and plus two dice. I only just noticed. I'm very observant, as I've told you before. Made precisely zero progress today. I made some progress on the cordon one. We find an outlet valve behind a web of sensors. Delicately, you begin filling a tank. Esh gives you a thumbs up. This is working. Cool. Uh-oh. Ooh, much better. Tucked into a service corridor deep below the reservoir, Esh is double-checking the seals on the water tanks loaded onto the motorized trolley. Though you are far enough away from any thoroughfares not to worry about being overheard, you both still speak in a hushed tones. How will you get these onto the briar? Esh glances back at you. We'll trolley these up to a bay further along, and then we'll bring in, bring in the briar for a quick and quiet collection. Speaking of quiet... She gives you a look and then looks pointedly back down the corridor towards the reservoir before hitting the ignition on the trolley to start it moving. You take the other side of the trolley and walk it up the wide service corridor with its flickering lights and Solheim detritus. You doubt it gets used by Haven Age. At least that's the hope. You glance across at Esh, her face a mask of determination as she guides the trolley along. Maybe some conversation will make this journey go a little easier. How did you meet Peek? Esh pauses, a little surprised by your question. She glances back down the tunnel, but in this deserted passage, she can hardly keep up the pretense of silence. We grew up together, she answers, but quickly and turns back to the trolley. But she can tell you are expecting her to add more. She seems to gather herself for an answer, not wanting to ignore you, but trying instead to get her answer straight in her head. Our outpost, Hawthorne, is not an easy place to grow up. The administrators keep a tight hold of everything. She rolls her eyes. Even though they are trapped in the same decaying installation as everyone else. Peek. She pauses. Peek found it harder than most. She pauses again, judging her words. 
I stepped in to help them out. Silence descends again, but you can feel the wheels turning in Esh's mind as the creaking wheels of the trolley take you along the corridor. Eek isn't the most practical of people. They used to be... Well... They needed someone to teach them to look after themselves. Stand up for themselves. That was me. She smiles. After that, I couldn't get rid of them. Esh stops talking, but you see her eyes have lit up, and you imagine she is recalling some moment or other from her and Peek's past. You both reached a wide bulkhead doorway and have to stop to shimmy the trolley over to the edge. When you are done, Esh turns to you. I'm good from here. Head back. And with that, she is gone, moving off into the dark tunnel ahead. You watch her go and then turn around and walk the distance back to the staircase you entered from, the tunnel humming around you as you do. As you walk, you try to piece together Esh's past. But all you have are glimpses of a person she once was. She seems to prefer it that way. I imagine so. There we go, we did one. I can't get negative for this, right? I'm positive. You and Esh roll up your sleeves and help with tank cycling. As you do, you speak to the farmers about the refugees. Wow, I actually got a positive outcome there. Amazing. I didn't know it was possible to get a positive outcome. God fucking damn it. There goes all my scrap. I'm all out of scrap now. <clears throat> I'm hungry. Hey, if only I had, like, money. It's too bad I'm broke. Oh, wait. I'm not broke. Eating too much food should fill up your condition, right? No, wait, it should deteriorate your condition. Eat too much food. Eh, you're stuck. Woohoo! Oh, now that's a clock? The algae takes time to grow, and each cycle more can be harvested from the stack. Patience is required. Accelerate growth? The algae in the stack grows at a regular rate, but with some careful feed adjustments and water cycling, you can improve your yield per cycle. Oh, really? The flotilla needs a lot of food to last out the quarantine, and Esh will settle for nothing less than a full hold's worth. Oh my gosh. He's so picky. Cool. So, we got more then, right? Do I have to do this one? Ah! I'm an idiot. Oh well. You're saying there's such thing as overeating? And you're too full and your condition goes down, right? You're like, ugh. My gosh, I went down one dice. Unacceptable. God damn it. Fight full. God damn it. Super cancelled.
Oh, what the hell? Ordon Operations, Quarantine Administration. Sabotage sensors. Some careful sabotage to the cordon systems should create a sensor gap that will allow the briar to pass the to bypass the automatic cyst qu quarantine systems. Blind spot. Creating a blind spot in the cordon's perimeter will give the briar a better chance of evading de detection when Esh makes her run. Haven Age suspicion. All across the cordon, Haven Age security are keeping a close eye on things. Gain their attention and you'll struggle to maintain access. One blind spot. Crew canteen. Tug crew canteen. Deflect suspicion. Taking hardline attitudes. Loudly arguing in favor of the quarantine. Making friends with security. There are ways to deflect suspicion. Convince the crew. With division rife among the tug crews. Gaining support for a supply shipment will be... will just be a case of picking the right crew and approaching them discreetly. Wow. That's better. Tug escort. A crew willing to escort the briar through the quarantine will give the ship a better chance at passing the cordon without any trouble. Wow. Haven H hangar. Cordon dock. Slice thrusters. The tugs have a powerful suite of ion thrusters for rapid maneuvering. If you can sneak in and slice them off, you'll have a significant upgrade for the briar. Briar upgrade. The kind of thrusters the tugs use will give the briar improved maneuvering. Useful in the cramped quarters of the flotilla. I've only got 12 cycles to do all this fucking shit. And I wasted my first cycle because I had nothing. Not overeating, it's a medical condition. God damn it! My mushrooms are ready. But I obviously can't waste any dice on that. I need all the dice I can get, really. Like I wasted a stabilizer there, but I have limited time. I need all the dice I could get. Why is that still full? Am I just supposed to have that full? It's been full since yesterday. Oh, it's about how much you can get? Wait, what? Why does that take away? Oh. Why can't I repeat that anymore then? But there's no algae growth over here. Alright. Maybe? It has to be full before I can harvest? Is that what it is? Now I'm starving again.
You were leaning against the metal crates you just loaded up with algae, packed and dried into bright green pucks. Esh hops into, onto one and beside you, flexing her aching back. <laughs> I hope the refugees like algae. I think they'll like food in general, yes. Is this enough? Esh squints at you, as if you had just interrupted her train of thought. It's a look you have become familiar with. It doesn't matter either way. This is what we've got. He sighs, rubbing the back of her neck. In these past cycles, in these past cycles, working the algae stack with Esh, you've had little insight into her mind. She rarely seems happy to start a conversation, but is always eager to end one. Despite this, you feel like something has grown between you. Something like silent trust. The kind that tends to seed itself in the fertile soil of hard but necessary work. Hmm. Concerned? Esh laughs. You could say that. He turns to face you. I think I'd be stupid to not be concerned about all of this. He's right, of course, though it's hard to focus your concerns on one thing in particular. Can the refugees survive on the flotilla? What are Haven Age doing to help them? If, if the quarantine is lifted, is the eye really in danger? Each worry is far too large to even begin to process, to judge. And they mesh with each other, or, or they mesh with other, more personal worries until you feel the anxiety growing in your chest. You look at Esh and are suddenly eager to speak, to talk about something, anything, rather than just sitting and feeling this growing weight. Why escape XPR? Esh pauses, her protective instinct fighting with the trust you built. You can see her begin to shrug the question off. Then she stops, rethinks, dies. What you need to understand, Sleeper, is that Erlen's Eye wasn't the only place where the Solheim Collapse happened. Sure, Hawthorne, where we grew up, was an XPR installation, but that didn't screen it from Solheim going under. Actually, Solheim was the only reason XPR were ever there, or were ever here. He pauses, hesitant to get into the whole story, but wanting to offer something. We... She flinches, correcting herself. They are a service corp, you understand? They set up outposts and surrogate systems like this to offer refueling, logistics, and maintenance services to bigger companies with extraction contracts. She gestures to the eye around her. Like Solheim. When Solheim went bust, XPR lost their client. And Hawthorne? Well, we lost everything. We became an outpost tasked with just holding on. Keep the refueling platforms running, they said. Keep the outpost stable. Hold on to our claim. He rubs at her head, as if recalling all this was somehow physically painful. Ow! My head! Ow! My head! Ow! Ow! This hurts, okay? Oh my gosh, the memories, they're just coming back. The memories are coming back. Ow! This was like, right? Do you know what it is like to spend your entire life in a place with no future? A place that exists only to hold a legal claim to a piece of territory? To shore up breach of contract negotiations between two corporations? It's like living in a... In a... She searches for the word, her eyes jumping back and forth. In a grave. She clenches her hands. So, if you are looking for the answer at, to why questions... That's your answer. We, Peek and I, know what it's like to be forgotten. To be locked out. She stares hard at the side of the stack, the algae whirling against the glass in beautiful patterns, and she doesn't look away. The silence extends, and you realize the conversation is over. Esh seems angry, not at you, but with herself, for even voicing such ideas. After a while, you stand and start to load the crates onto the powered cargo trolley that Esh will run back to the briar. As you do, you try to catch her eye, but she avoids it, soothing herself instead with a comforting simplicity of physical work. Wow. 
Guy sails straight at you and you hit him. Apparently you're aimbotting. Well, how could you shoot somebody who's sailing straight at you? Just like that brig did us some weeks ago. It sailed right at us. Boom, boom, dead. taking notes though. If I ever sail straight up to somebody and they start shooting at me, I'm going to accuse them of aimbotting. And see how that goes. Alright, food and water. Well, security is the main issue. Yeah. Just one. I got one upgrade point. I'm not getting anything with one upgrade point. Everything's done. Everything's three upgrade points. I don't even know why it bothers to let me know there's upgrades available. Those aren't. messenger a rapid burst of movement catches your attention a drone its fins adjusting as it hovers in place floats in the corridor hello a drone shifts a little but does not respond a drone buzzes closer and a voice gurgles out of its speaker distorted and strange cordon 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 time sleeper come to the cordon we need to speak Who is this? The drone clicks and whirs and the recording starts playing again. Laper, come to the cordon. We need to speak. Inspect the drone! You move closer and the drone bobs away to a safe distance. But as it does, you see the ha of Haven Age emblazoned on its side. Could this be Fang's drone? Satisfied it has delivered its message, the drone rotates and accelerates away as rapidly as it arrived. You stare at it as it disappears from sight. Hoping for some insight that escapes you. Do the cordon, then. Alright. Question marks? Unknown. As you enter the passage that leads through the cordon, a flash of movement catches your eye. The drone. It stops to make sure you've seen it, and then flits into a side passage, leading it to a set of narrow stairs. You climb up through a dark shaft, the drone stopping at each landing to check you are following. Despite its lack of expression, there's something overbearing about the way the drone waits, impatiently realigning its fins in sequence. After a long climb, you come out onto an observation platform. The cordon and the vast ramshackle refugee ships beyond fill your vision. The scale seems impossible and immediately you feel small and naive for even thinking you could affect the situation. Something shifts nearby. A drone again? Who the hell are you? Helene? Helene or Helen? I don't know. Do you pronounce the yell now? Frustrated Haven Age counselor? A woman is standing at the window, at the edge of your vision. You aren't surprised you didn't notice her. She, seems she too seems impossibly small in the shadow of the flotilla. The drone buzzes by her shoulder and she turns. Sleeper, sorry for all of the cloak and dagger nonsense. She nods at the drone. 
But I have never regretted being cautious. She smiles a tight smile and holds out a hand. I'm Helene. Shake her hand. The tight smile holds, but the drone keeps its single eye fixed on you. The effect is a little unnerving. Look, she glances around the empty observation deck, as if checking for potential eavesdroppers. Let's be straight with each other. I know about your plans, and... She cuts in before you can respond. I understand your motives. You look at her in her overalls, the yellow markers, the HA sigil. You've been on the eye long enough to recognize a Haven Age member when you see them. You are Haven Age. Yes, I mean, I expect that is obvious. A tight smile again. I hope you won't hold that against me. He glances around nervously again and moves a little closer. This entire situation, I... I am not here to defend it. He glances back at the flotilla. No one is happy about this. Then release the flotilla. He sighs. How do you think this works? He pauses. Lieber, tell me something. What does Haven Age mean to you? Uh... A work in progress. Another sloop also invaded the area, so that whilst that whiny bitch fights him, you're gonna go sell your loot. Get him! Get him, other sloop. Go sell your stuff. It's a distraction technique. I'll be chasing the first guys, actually. Ah. I've probably been chasing them the whole map. Just you wait. Work in progress, huh? She smiles. Fair, I think. Even age is used, is used to being criticized. In some ways, we invite it. Our members are free to bring up grievances at any meeting, to propose new structures and approaches. She shifts her weight impatiently. As a counselor, it is my duty to listen to them. That is why I was elected by the members. We are an imperfect system, yes, and each counselor, each member, each representative can be flawed and worse. He looks down. But we keep this place running. That is what we do. And non members? There are paths to membership. And we cannot force everyone on the station to join us. What do you expect? We are an association of individuals. We cannot always account for the needs of those outside that structure. She turns and looks out at the flotilla. No matter how much we wish to. Can the eye take in thousands of refugees safely? I don't know. This place is a ruin, sleeper. What do you think the council discusses? The price of Giral? We, pl we make plans to keep this place spinning, to keep life support working, to ensure... Eileen's slate chirps and a grim look passes across her face as she sees the notification. She looks tired, the screen light casting her rigid expression in a pale glow. Laper, I didn't bring you here to explain how Haven Age works. I came to talk about your plan to cross the cordon, reach the quarantine, and supply the flotilla. He looks directly at you. Stay silent! I know you think you are helping the flotilla, but you cannot do this. Right now, halfway across along the ring, one of a countless series of debates are being held. These debates are to evaluate the potential harm that could be caused if the refugees of the flotilla are left to enter the station. These debates are at a standstill. Eileen walks to the window. Too many in the Haven Age Council think of the flotilla as a threat. After recent events, a hardline group has emerged. Protective. Selfish. They seek only to benefit the members. In their mind, the flotilla is a danger to life on the eye. If you are caught crossing the cordon and breaching the quarantine, it will only strengthen the hardline counselor's case. Criminals who stole a ship from XPR undermining the security of the station... She shakes her head. It's exactly what they want. 
refugees need supplies. They do. And that's exactly what I want to give them. But unless the quarantine is lifted through a fair process, they will never get them. He sighs deeply. And those XXPR spacers you are running with? Sleeper, do you know anything about them? Ah, more than I know about you. He looks at you pleadingly. Let's change that, Sleeper. Why do you think the refugee flotilla came here now? Something is happening in the system. Something is pushing people out of colonies and outposts that have survived since Solheim collapse. That have survived... Or wait, blah, 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 that we... Blah, 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 uh, went back up a sentence. We need to be ready for whatever is coming. Ready to protect the eye. I know the eye means something to you. I know there's a reason you are still here. Help me protect it. Elaine fixes you with a strong look. Persuade those spacers that this is the wrong move, and they will get caught, and the flotilla will be locked down. But Haven Age will be delivered into those with the worst instincts. Forget this suicidal supply run with people you barely know. Help me fight for the eye. Why don't you stop them? Yeah, you know it's going to happen, so why aren't you just arresting them or something? If I expose the plan, it's the same as if it goes ahead and they are caught. Every way I look at it, the eye looks compromised. The quarantine justified. Hardliners get their scapegoat. Don't offer up the excuse the hardliners need to lock the flotilla out altogether. To persuade the members, they are the safest pair of hands. She looks at you imploringly. Please. You look back at her and the flotilla behind and sense of desperation in her plea. A notification breaks the silence. Shit. She rapidly scrolls through pages of data. Sleeper, I need to go. She looks torn. Think about this, please. Talk to the spacers. Help them see reason. And she quickly leaves the observation deck before you have time to respond. You stay for a moment, watching the lights of the tugs and the flotilla and wonder what it feels like to be on one of those ships, so close to your destination and yet so far from it. And then you think of the Haven Age Council Chamber, across the eye, where the right of these people to find safety is being debated. You shiver, and then you too are gone, back into the stairwell in the cold dark below. Wah! Like, what should we do? What should we... Should we let them go through the proper process and potentially starve in the meantime? Or should we get them some aid? And potentially get caught and they starve and... It's tricky, isn't that? The only way to win is to succeed, I guess. And they don't starve. If nobody catches you, nobody knows about it. They're just amazed they had so many supplies. They'd be like, damn, these guys survived for so long before we officially decided. I still want to know how she found out, though. I got them cameras everywhere. I mean, how am I supposed to talk to him about it? I've got three fucking days. God damn it. Eek is waiting for you when you slip out of the operations center, nervously poking at their small slate. Leaper, they hiss. I followed what you were doing on the network. Incredible work. How do you do that? It comes naturally. Eek smiles. I can't tell if that's modesty or just the truth. Interfacing skills like that? It's almost worth being... They stop themselves. Sorry, I didn't mean... Don't worry about it. 
Peek nods. Sorry. You and Peek quietly slip into the main walkway and work your way back to the public areas of the cordon. Haven Age has had to quickly respond to the flotilla's arrival, and that means a lot of contractors and spacers walking through these corridors. You blend in easily enough. I haven't really met a sleeper before. Peek begins. As you might have guessed. They smile nervously. Hawthorn is an XPR service outpost, and since the collapse, no one came for refueling or repairs anymore. Though my generation has never met anyone outside the company. We heard about sleepers. They nod in your direction. From the data packets that come through from XPR every once in a while. They usually contain news along with the corporate propaganda, but the reports were light on the details. S and ARP have kept the sleeper program pretty quiet anyway, and I think XPR are only interested in telling their employees about it because it made living in our company town look like a good life, in comparison to being a piece of corporate property. They freeze. Sorry, uh, again, I don't mean... They look down. I'm just not sure how to talk about this stuff. It's okay! I mean, I got my tracker out. I'm free! I, I don't mind talking about it now. He smiles. I will shut up about it now. Oh, uh, well? Are you sure? You walk on a little further. A walkway becoming busier. You b both relax a little more and go with the flow of people. I just want to say... I think I understand. They begin again. Clearly, this has been on their mind. I understand the need to escape. To get free of it all. They laugh at themselves. The structures, the systems, the company horizons in a company town. They stare ahead. The small places, small corridors, small people. They look away. The slow death it brings. That's it. They turn to you. I get why you signed up to be a sleeper, and why you escaped from that, too. Uh, Bob, Bob, stay silent. Eek looks away. There's altogether too much running through your head. Too much to say. You walk in silence again. Each of you in their own thoughts, but moving together through space nonetheless. After a while, you come to the entrance to the cordon handfuls of workers and crews filter in and out through the t through two huge loading bay doors. Beak stops. Okay. They pause. I'm heading back to the briar. Once again. Incredible work on the sensors. That blind spot you created. That should give us a real advantage. See you soon. They head off, disappearing into the crowd almost immediately, outrunning their own nervousness. You created a blind spot which will appear on the cycle of Esha's run. How long it will remain open is yet to be seen. Wow! Uh oh. Uh oh. We'll have to put points in that Haven Age Suspicion one. Which kind of sucks. Wait, it's already at three? Oh, no. I thought it was separate for all the ones. I guess it's the same for all of them. I don't think I'll have yeah, get it good enough dice to get all these done in time. Let's roll and see what we get. We got a five! Get the heck out of here. Phew. Require more food. Any scrap to repair condition.
Sleeper! Peek is waiting for you when you leave, but they look different. Pale, drawn out. You need to come up to the briar now. They don't meet your eye. What's happened? Not here. Peek kisses. Come to the ship. We'll be waiting. Peek walks away. Don't take long. And with that, they disappear around the corner, leaving you anxious and confused. You probably got a warning from Helene. The fuck off. Oh! All those things disappeared. What? Peek, cautious space or As you walk into the climbing briar's cavernous bay, now filled with crates and containers, Ash is waiting for you. In front of her, sliced open with its insides scattered across the top of a heavy-duty crate, is an object you recognize. Helene's drone. You freeze. Come in quick! Peek nudges you into the bay, looking behind you before sealing the entryway. We have to start being careful. You move closer to the container, your eyes on the drone splayed out in pieces, some parts of it hooked up to a slate that Peek picks up and begins tapping away at. Ash looks up from the dissection. We caught it buzzing around nearby, heading for the ship. He leans over and taps the HA sigil on one of the removed pieces of plating. It's a Haven Age spy. We think we, we got it before it sent data back, but we can't be sure. Peek looks at you nervously. Ash cuts in. Have you noticed anyone watching you? Any drones like this? Anyone following you up to the briar? Should we be honest or should we deflect? I mean, I think they should know all the risks involved. A head pat. If you're doing awesome, Enigma. Head pat. Hmm. I think we'll just be honest. I've seen this drone. Ash frowns. Following you? I met its owner. Ash pauses for a while. Peek looking between the two of you. Explain, sleeper. Esh says quietly. Tell them about M Helene. Why would I lie? I'm just tell them the truth. You explain that you met with Helene at the cordon, and you tell Esh and Peek about what she told you. That the Haven Age Council are debating lifting the quarantine, but they are blocked by the hardliners. You speak faster and faster, but before you can finish, Esh walks away in anger, and then comes back again, her eyes burning. What is this, sleeper? Have you understood nothing from what we've told you? She paces in front of you. Haven Age are not your friends. They are administrators, which means they are interested only in their own power, their own survival, their own causes. They divide people as easily as sorting livestock. The greater good of their work demands it. The wider project of the station, the colony, the nation. Her eyes are wide as she speaks, her anger barely contained. What do you mean, I didn't have a choice? I don't understand that. She wants to help! Esh laughs. Help what, sleeper? Undo the mess of her own creation? She only wishes to placate you so you'll compromise. So you'll do what is acceptable, not what is right. Uh-oh. Um, uh, it's, uh, it's a complicated um, political matter, okay? Hmm... Is just a counselor trying? Hmm. I hope the proest profilia is doing awesome. Yeah, I'm doing pretty well tonight. Wait, wait, it's a Friday. Now we filling out with some cool sitters on sleep or. We've pretty much finished, like, our first playthrough of the main game, and this is the DLC we started here. We're starting the DLC story. Play 
in Peru. Oh, great. Here we go. Here we go. Get, get your boxing gloves on. Here you go. Pow, 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 pow. Mm. She is trying. Let me tell you something, sleeper, Esh says, her rage hardening into pain. When people become administrators, they give up something. Some part of them, some part of being human, being an equal among others, goes away. They start talking about the greater good, the systems, the ways in which their hands are tied, or their processes compromised. My mother was the administrator of Hawthorne, and I have seen what it did to her. That noble higher calling, it is toxic. People should never have the choice to decide the fate of others. And those that do, do so at a cost to their humanity. I mean... Yeah? I could see I could see her side of the argument. I'm grinding out Fallout New Vegas currently. Ooh, cool, cool. I'll have to get back to that myself sometime. I've got a few achievements on it on the Xbox 360 version. But I stopped uh, playing it and uh, never went back to it. I'll get around to it at some point. Mondays are my Xbox games that I started but didn't complete, so eventually it'll be New Vegas' turn. It's not for a while, though, but, you know, it'll, it'll be around eventually. Sometime by 2055. It's the same thing she's doing, though. She's an extremist. Uh, I mean, I understand her reasoning. If those people don't get supplies, they're gonna starve, right? Kind of like, uh, like an IRL example I can think of. Like, uh, you see some refugees on a boat, right? Are you gonna leave those refugees in that boat to, like, possibly die? Or are you gonna rescue them and take them back to shore, even though they'll probably just get deported or whatever? There was some news article about something like that that happened some months ago. I don't remember what ultimately happened, though. Uh, it's kind of kind of like that. You got some people who need help. Should you help them? Is it the morally correct thing to do? Peek tries to cut in, but Esh holds up a hand. Don't start, Peek. Don't ask me to be reasonable or to calm down. <laughs> Don't tell me to calm down. Don't ask me to be reasonable or calm down. Thousands of people are desperate out there. Being reasonable will only prolong their suffering. I mean, Helene can help. Esh turns away. I'm done with this. You're risking this entire supply run just by being here. She starts walk. She walks back into the bay and starts checking the straps on the crates. I go next cycle. We don't need you anymore. Get out. Leaper. Peak looks torn. You have to understand. This is personal for Esh. I know. Eker looks away, then at Esh. I don't know, sleeper. I just don't know what to do. I glance around the Bay of Briar, the walls seeming closer every second. This whole thing is closing in on you. And the question is, where do you want to be when it all collapses? You look at Peek. And what do you think, sleeper? Peek rubs their forehead. Did we do this thing or not? Uh... Those refugees probably don't have backup explosives to use if you don't give what they want. Oh. You think they might not have a black box in the corner somewhere? No, 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 no. That, that box of bombs was just extra supplies, is what she said, right? Right? And just supplies. It's not. It's just um. 
It's actually got like a, um, some like tape and stuff in it. It's just got to like scrap or stuff. This is not bombs. In fact, that puts the refugees in greater danger if they're found. Well, it's basically what Helene said. If they get caught, that gives the people who don't want to help a solid, tangible reason to convince the others to not want to help. But you can understand, like, the fact that she doesn't want people to starve to death. She doesn't want people to die because of bureaucracy or politics or whatever. It's not, it's not a simple black and white situation, right? Uh, should we do this thing or not, though? Um, I should. There's, there's more downsides than there are upsides, so I don't think they should. I can understand why they want to, though. It grimaces. I was worried you would say that. He was looking for reassurance. To be honest with you, Sleeper, I'm not sure how we got here. I mean, I know what we did, but it is, it is like the universe shifted under us. One moment we were escaping Hawthorne, and now we are here. And I have no idea what's coming. They look at Esh. But do you see her? They look back at you. She, know, she knows how we got here. She's driving this thing forward, and she... They pause. She saved my life. They're all ride or die. Though, if your answer is no, I'm going to need you to stand back and get out of our way. Because wherever she goes, that's where I'll follow. Hmm. I mean, he seems pretty determined. I understand. And help us, sleeper. Finish this. We are so close. They look at you expectantly. God damn it. And I just watch from the cordon with, like, my binoculars. But going with them is more exciting for the video game. Once you stay away and then, then you don't see you don't get to blow up with everybody. If it was like an IRL situation, I, I would pick the second option. I'm out. But it's a video game. It's a video game. If I die, I just reload, right? I'm in! I do think they're stupid, though. Speak not. Okay, then. They squeeze your shoulder. Onward! Mm hmm mm hmm They slip away to help Esh, leaving you alone to replay the conversation in your head. A certain kind of grim determination settling in the room. Last chance to prepare. That's not enough time to finish all the things. My my deadline got cut off by the. You're gonna do it tomorrow instead of the day after. Guess we'll f do this one. I don't have enough time to do both. So. You meet Peek, leaning in a corner of the canteen in their typically unassuming way. It occurs to you, as you approach, that Peek must have had some practice at staying invisible. All good? They look up from their slate. I crew you were talking to. They nod to the group leaving the canteen. Will they join us? That's what they say. You aren't sure? Peek looks back at them as they disappear into the corridors of the installation. Looks like we'll have to take them at their word either way. Peek beckons for you to follow as they peel off the wall and head out into the walkway overlooking the cordon. Glad you were here to talk them into it. I never had much of a way with people. Peek smiles and looks away quickly as you walk. Why's that? Well, Peek pauses. 
Maybe it'd be a more accurate to say people never had much of a way with me. They squint, irritated by their own odd turn of phrase. What I mean is, people have caused me a lot of trouble. I've had people hate me without knowing a thing about me. They tuck their hair behind an ear. I'm sure you know the feeling. I do. He glances at you. Sorry to hear that. It marks you. Am I right? It does. He nods. We both walk in silence for a moment. Not an awkward silence, but one of solidarity. Peek leans, leads you to a, Peek leads you around a corner, heading back to the main cordon axis way. I appreciate you coming in and helping us out on this sleeper. On talking to the crew and... Well, you know. Maybe after this insane plan is done, we can talk properly. They keep looking ahead and you realize they're nervous. I'd like that. Peek smiles, looking down at their feet. That's settled then, they say to the floor. I better report the news to Ash. We have ourselves a tug escort. Peek stops at an intersection. See you soon, sleeper, and please take care. And with that, they drift away, their head down, their gait changing as they do, their practiced invisibility shrouding them like a cape. Wow. Cool. It's real. It'd be really tough to actually be able to fill up all three. Lice thrustors. Oh no! Oh my! It's really. T it'd be really tough to do absolutely everything. You pretty much have to get, like, really good dice and not fuck up at all. I did make a couple mistakes. I started it with only one die, so I lost, like, the first day. And then I fucked up, like, the uh, algae growth a bit, I think. I made a couple mistakes. So it's pretty hard to actually do everything. Rest in peace, me. Bum, 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 bum. Side drown a colony that's only just surviving. Yeah, it's like getting a bunch of refugees when you are already struggling to feed the people you've got. It's a tough situation, right? If you feel that moral obligation to help, but at the same time, if you take on all those people, then the people already there are going to suffer too. It's not an easy situation. Oh, wait. I thought we were leaving next. Do I get an extra day after all? I thought we were leaving today. Unfortunately, I do still don't have enough dice. You pretty much have to do everything perfectly. You actually want to get everything done. Seems crazy to me. Uh, well, let's see if we get lucky. Woohoo! I think we filled it. He grins as you pile the ion thruster sets onto the motorized trolley in a derelict lo loading bay. I borrowed this from Esh. I barely know how it works. They seem giddy at the idea of stealing the ship parts from Haven Age. I thought you worked for XP XP PR. I did, but not as a repair tech. They help you heave the thruster into position. My specialty was computer systems. I mostly worked on keeping the protocols that ran the refueling platforms from totally decaying due to lack of use. There's a load of platforms in orbit of the moon, Hawthorne is on, and Cinder itself. 
Esh and I ended up having to head out to them regularly to work on them. Sounds technical. Big smiles. That was the best job at Hawthorne. You get assigned a ship, you get to leave the colony for a bit. So much better than outpost maintenance or canteen work. The only reason we got assigned it was that Esh's mother is the administrator of Hawthorne, and Esh managed to get my name on the list too. Eek looks for the trolley's ignition. Esh is always saving me. I find the switch and hit it, and the trolley starts whining. Eek looks at the thrusters. Esh will install these. The briar is her baby, really. Eek looks towards the bay exit. Truth be told, I was surprised she could bring herself to take it from her mother. Losing a ship? That has to have hurt the colony. What is her mother like? Tough. You'd have to be you'd have to be to keep control of a services outpost with no services to provide. He looks away. It's a tough place overall, Hawthorne. And Esh's mom? She likes it that way. He shuffles the trolley out of the bay into the corridor. They'll manage without the briar. No choice. He smiles. And I have to admit I'd love to have seen her face when she saw we had gone. She'd be like, Aww! Peek pauses. <sniffs> Don't tell Ash that. I'll tell her immediately. They walk on quietly, lost in their memories of Hawthorne. Okay, I think I can manage the rest. Peek brushes their hair out of their face. You've done more than enough this cycle. Peek looks over the thrusters. Once these are fitted, the briar will handle better, better than ever. You might even get a thank you from Ash. Peek laughs. They head off into the corridor, the trolley whining its high-pitched whine. See you soon. Wow. The cordon, Haven Age quarantine. Cordon sweep. Haven Age are on the hunt for a suspicious individual. You'll need to lay low for a couple of cycles before you can move freely again. Yeah, if you ever get that before you're done, you're not getting all the things done, man. But I just finished the last thing, so who the fuck cares? Who cares? We we good. All right, you know what this calls for. We must have one last amazing meal at Emphasis Stall before we go die. We need a la good last meal. You know what it should call for? Oh, what should it call for? I'm surprised we actually managed to get everything done. They barely give you enough time to do it. I see why they say it's late game shit, because there's no way you'd have like the dice flipping ability and stuff like that to do it and get everything done. I ha We have the best possible chance of succeeding, so if we fail, it was meant to be. Not because I didn't get everything done. I did my best. Careful, wink, huh? She's gone, sleeper. Eek is breathless and shaking. He started the run without us. Oh, wait, really? Shit. Let's go. If we head to the cordon now. Eek starts back up the corridor. They turn back. She has to make it, sleeper. She has to. A shiver runs down your spine. Esh, I hope you know what you are doing. Well, I would say she doesn't. I would say she's fucking stupid. Port on Haven Age Quarantine. Haven Age Quarantine Zone. You arrive, frantic and anxious, at the cordon. Peek is nowhere to be seen. Then you hear footsteps, hammering on the metal stairway Helene's drone led you through before. The one that leads up to the observation deck. You leap up the stairs two at a time and make it to the top, momentarily blinded by the light pouring it into the observation deck. Sleeper! Peek emerges from the light. He just... I know she's trying to protect me, but... It's okay. She chose. That's right. It was her choice. But what about my choice, Sleeper? I'm not a child anymore. 
I can fight for myself. They turn away. That's true. Took away his choice to go with her. There she is! He rushes to the wide window, leaning forward to catch a glimpse of the climbing briar's blue XPR livery against the black of the void. You spot the climbing briar, a glint of blue and white, and beside it the red glare of a tug's lights. The tug crew went with her! Peek smiles. I knew they'd keep their word. That'll help. Peek doesn't seem to hear you, but the idea of the crew backing Esh up makes you smile. Maybe this thing will work. Probably not. He watches the briar and its tug escort arc towards the edge of the cordon, dem demarcated by the red lights of the perimeter system. So far, so good. The briar will look just or will just look like another refugee ship being escorted into the cordon, at least at a glance. He grips the rail as Esh reaches the edge of the cordon, that invisible net of sensors splayed between ships and drones. Now let's hope the blind spot triggered. You think back to the mess of systems you had to wade through to set it up. The delicate contingencies you set up to trigger the sensor black out at just the right moment. Without noise, without ceremony, the briar slides through the cordon. You await the flickering of alarm lights, the swarming of drones. But nothing. Just another cycle. Just another ship. Ash is in. Both you and Peek let out the breath you've been holding and laugh. How'd she do it? Peek smiles, shaking their head. We did it. Yeah, she didn't do it. We did all the hard work. Peek smiles wider. Yes, we did. They laugh. You feel a little shaky from the tension, but Peek's ease helps you settle. You imagine Esh, steely-eyed, steely in the pilot seat of the briar, searching for a place to dock. Maybe being stubborn has its advantages. You okay? Me? Peek sighs. I think that took years off my life, but I've got to hand it to Esh. He was right. You and Peek turn back to the window, looking for the briar again amongst all those halls, the calm fading as new worries settle in. Oh no, the stream went kaput. Attempting to reconnect. Let's see. Will the stream come back? Reconnection successful. Good job, Twitch. You managed to come back. Wow, wow, wow. It looks like it's back now. It looks like it's back now. Oh, she broke. OBS lost the connection to the Twitch. It looks like we're back now, though. I don't. It reconnected successfully, it says. Hello, world! I have returned! <laughs> this calls for a celebration of, um. Of dances that you can't see because you don't have seven TV enabled. <laughs> Looks like we're back though. I'm gonna keep reading that. Did I read that last one? I already forgot. You and Peek turn back to the window, looking for the briar again amongst all those halls. The calm fading as new worries settle in. Yeah, did they plan for how to get back without getting spotted? You spot the briar first this time, docking with the largest of the flotilla's ships, a vast converted tanker, half of its protective plates removed. You think about the effort it must have taken to get that thing all the way here from the inner system. You watch the briar, unable to get any sense of progress from its placid exterior. They will be offloading everything now, Peek says, both assuring you and themselves that everything is going to plan. You think of all the supplies loaded into the briar, and how long the process of unloading them might take. The bay was packed, rammed with everything you could offer, and the thought of bringing all that to the flotilla makes you smile. You think of the reaction of the refugees, of the welcome they'll give Esh as the bearer of such gifts. You even, even imagine a smile from Esh as she is showered with thanks. You focus on that as you watch the briar and continues the nervous wait for it to finish unloading. It's breaking off! 
Pig points at the briar, and you see the puff of air and dust that accompanies an emergency depressurization. Esh must have ended things early. But why? Then you see them. The tugs closing in on the briar. Avenage must have spotted the ship. You and Peek are up against the window again, willing the briar a safe path out of the flotilla. Suddenly the briar shifts in space, a blue blur between two hulls. Peek whistles. Look at that! They smile at you. Look like those upgrades we put together work. Good. He washes Esh cuts through the crowded flotilla, the tugs not dar daring to follow her dangerous path, and peeling away. It is hard to keep track of the briar, and suddenly both of you and Peek are searching the black for a sign. Where is she gone? Then all of a sudden she is out, blue against the black, pulling away from the cordon on a wide arc back towards the station. A clean run. Peek cheers and smiles at you. We did it! She's out! They beam uncontrollably at you. The tension released. You find yourself smiling too. Smiling at these two beautiful idiots and their beautiful ship. And Peek is hugging you. Squeezing you with all the nervous energy that had been building. Thank you, sleeper. We did this together. They step back, still smiling. We did something. Come on. They rush out of the observation deck. Let's meet her. got an upgrade. We have three points. Hmm, what should we plus two? Let's do a um, engineer I got. I don't, oh, I only have two points. I had three. I thought I had three, but I only have two. Never mind, I'm not upgrading shit. If only, if only my stream had stayed dead. If only Twitch OBS had stayed dead. So sad. So tragic. You and Peek rush into the briar, finding yourselves in the now empty bay. The change is a reminder of what you achieved, and looking around you feel all the more satisfied. A hiss sounds at the far end of the bay, and Esh enters, looking exhausted. Peek runs up to embrace her, but she sits down on the bay floor before they reach her. You did it! They sit beside you, or beside her. Esh, you were incredible! She smiles a small smile at this, laying her head on Peek's shoulder. You suddenly feel like you are intruding, seeing the two of them like this, quiet and content. Leaper! Peek calls. Come on over! You cross the bay and sit beside them on the hard metal floor. Esh, he asks, did you give the flotilla our chairs? They both burst out laughing at the ridiculousness of it all, at the exhaustion and the worry and everything else. You laugh too. It is impossible not to. And after a while, you all come to a stop. Peek wiping their eyes and Esh shaking her head. You would have loved to see it, sleeper. Esh says quietly, a welcome I got. They came to greet the ship once I docked, to offload the supplies. I told them I was coming, of course, as soon as I got inside the cordon. But there were so many. Children, families, they were smiling at me, shaking my hand. Thul was there too, Peek, and he's just as gruff as he sounds over comms. He smiles. They took it all, crate after crate, until the ship was emptied out. Esh looks away. But there were so many... And even with everything we managed to bring, they needed more. They made me promise I would try to come back. Esh. Peek shakes their head. You know we can't do that twice. Esh stands up. What are we supposed to do? Wait for them to lift the quarantine? He's angry again, that familiar tension rising in her voice. Peek tries to pull her back down. Sit. Esh, rest. You have done enough for today. Don't peek. I know my limits. Esh hardens. Okay, well, seeing as they didn't catch you, perhaps they will lift it. They know the flotilla poses no danger now. And if they can account for the extra load on the life support... Esh walks away toward the ladder that leads up into the upper part of the ship. I need to rest, peek. He holds up a hand. Sleeper. And she limps up the ladder 
step by painful step. I'm afraid if you were expecting a change in Esha's demeanor, Peek smiles at you. At least she's honest. Peek nods. I think I need some rest too. They put a hand on your shoulder and get up from the floor. We couldn't have done this without you, sleeper. And I know those in the flotilla would thank you too. Thank you! Peek limps up the ladder too, leaving you alone on the metal floor of the bay. Your thoughts drift to all those people on the flotilla, sleeping and sitting on metal floors like this. Children, families, laying in cargo bays and repurposed fuel tanks. You know their story isn't over yet, and you look forward to meeting them. The quarantine will lift. You feel more sure of this fact every moment, even though you aren't sure why. You lie back on the metal and stare at the ceiling. What was it Fang told you Erlin said? The eye opens for us all? Maybe the old guy was right. A home for the lost. You like the idea of that. Maybe in time you can help make that a reality. But something is bothering you. A sliver of a thought like a splinter you can't extract. Why are thousands of refugees coming here now? People don't abandon their homes for nothing. What wave is rushing through the system? And when will it reach the eye? You shudder on the cold metal floor and get up. Something is coming. You can feel it. This isn't over. Wow! That was exciting. But what now? Probably gotta wait for that to be done or something. More? Who could have foreseen that? I know, right? It's only like there's three DLC episodes or something. Well, I actually... I probably start the next chapter after I go to sleep, right? Nothing to do over here. That's what I thought. Let's go, Lama. What should we spend our dice on for today? Hmm... Can we get some scrap? I guess we could. Do some repair conditions. I oh, know, I should have picked indoor. Uh, let's not do that one. you give me a negative. I think it's the rules. I cannot believe these people. I like how I decided to join them and I ended up just watching the whole thing anyway. So it's basically the same as if I'd said I was out. Which also means the inhabitants actually have to suffer. No! How could they? So I can do it today. Yeah, 
Illusion of choice, so that's alright. Mm. Episode Flux complete. The first part of the flotilla story is complete. Episode Refuge begins when the cycle clock below is filled. Good luck! God damn it. The Gathering Storm. What's done is done. Now all you can do is wait to see what happens next. I see. What do we want to do for two days? Make mana? Exactly strapped for cash. Harvest mushrooms. I can make more stable molizor. Since I can't buy more stable molizor anymore. Wow, I didn't get any. Love it. Only got one. Suffer like you do. That sounds exciting. There for energy. Oh, that's the door. I'm the commune. What do we want to do with this one? Old docking bay, you find a locker corroded shut. You crack it open, and the components inside are in perfect condition. Whoa! Was that exciting? Isn't it thrilling? I didn't realize there were different descriptions here. You find a tired old cleaning bot still ticking over deep in the rim. You chase it down and break it open and get at the components. Mm. 
crack. What? They crack open a door and are greeted by the expanse of stars and the cold of space. They just about managed to cling onto the eye. A damn. Couldn't stop killing my stuff. There you go. Well, because you said it. Yeah, very exciting individual. Wasn't your point? Why not? Are we about to do the same thing all over again in episode two? What do you think? Uh oh, what the fuck was that noise? Yeah, a station at the edge. Hey, hey Guru, what's up? What's up? How's going? How you doing? It hits you like a wave, a wide-edged breaker roaring inland with the force of the entire ocean. The impact is a screaming brightness, blinking out everything. Behind it is silence. You float in silence, suspended. No, you do not float. You are the silence. It has filled you up. It has emptied you out. You cease to exist. Time passes. Though you do not feel it passing. Then something flickers in the silence. And then something moves. That something is you. You open your eyes to a metal ceiling of flickering lights. You feel the floor around you, patting it with shaking hands. You assemble an image of yourself, lying on your back in a corridor. You shake off the silence and sit up. What was that? You glance around, looking for a sign of some change. Damage on the walls, shouts in the distance, fire and fear. Nothing has changed. The silence sits around you like fog. You try to think, furrowing your brow. How do you think again? <laughs> it doesn't seem so easy anymore. You force the pathways to light up, the databanks to grant access. You feel like a fraction drive starting up after a long shutdown and cold vacuum. In the wave... In the wave was noise, just as the sound produced by a wave raking across a pebble beach represents trillions of impacts heard as a single roar. So this sound was the result of trillions of electrons flickering in place, heard as a single, impossible scream. A memory slash image comes to you. It's like, do you say the slash part? I don't know. One for moments before the wave hit. You squint as you imagine it, trying to cohere its blurry form. A broken skeletal ring. The eye. And then a vast arc approaching it. A razor-edged white curve. The wave. The wave approaches the eye. The eye spins, turning each part to face that vast white edge. You recognize their skeletal data cloud, data cloud forms. The bright market. The low end. The greenway. The wastes. Then, the wave hits just as the flotilla, the cordon, turns to face it. And after that, everything is silence. You open your eyes again. That is the epicenter. But of what? Good question. I'm at the epicenter of. Bedtime story. Oh, that's what the uh, citizen sleeper is, right? It's bedtime story. Uncool, Dolby? Because it wasn't. I thought it was very cool. That's just my pro opinion, though. Cool. 
cordon. Even before you reach the cordon, the damage is obvious. The blinking red lights, the drones, the tugs, all are gone. Half the cordon's frame has also been shorn away. Perhaps th through the impact of some falling ship. Of some failing ship. People push past you in the corridor. Both Haven Age staff and contractors clearing the cordon. Push forward. You push through the flow of people, and despite a few suspicious looks, they offer no resistance. The further you pass into the cordon, the less people you see. You can see a few sections have been closed off, their bulkhead doors sealed and red warning lights punctuating the corridors, but otherwise most areas seem functional. Suddenly you feel a hand fall on your shoulder. Haven Age Security? You should have known better than to wander into this place. You brace yourself as you turn. Sleeper! Peek embraces you as you turn. What are you doing here? Did you see the cordon go down? Did Esh speak with you? He glances around, and you can see they are panicked. I don't know what's happening. That makes two of us. Esh left without saying anything. Wait, what? Peek runs a hand through their hair. I was away from the ship, and when I got back, she'd taken it and gone. Then I saw the damage to the cordon. Did she really go and, like, attack them? What the fuck? How stupid are you? Of course you did. You see how it is. See how what is? First them ads. Now I will... Uh, no, I will not buy a used BMW. They don't want you to buy a used BMW. They want you to buy a brand new BMW. Peek looks at you with wild eyes. What if this is some Haven Age attempt to clear the flotilla? To scuttle the refugee chi ships? Don't jump to conclusions is definitely the answer there. Peek pauses. What do you know, sleeper? There was a wave. Peek frowns. A wave? What do you mean? They pause to think. A signal that only affects electrical systems, perhaps? An EMP would have taken out most of the station, but... Peek runs a hand through their hair. I don't know what you are saying, sleeper. That doesn't sound... They look away down the corridor for a moment. Look, I have to find Esh. I'm sure you feel felt something, but we can talk about that later. They set off down the corridor. I can't sit around talking any longer. Find me on the flotilla. I'm going to find a way to Esh no matter what. With that, they rush away into the depths of the cordon leaving you behind. Seems like you'll need to follow if you want to get any answers. What? Cordon! Grab for passage. You find a small shuttle scavenging supplies from the cordon to take back to the flotilla. They'll take you too if you bring some scrap along. Wait, what? I'm going over to the flotilla now? It is? Well, I guess we can agree to disagree. You hand over the scrap and squeeze into the crowded shuttle. Time to head to the flotilla. Oh, I can just move up now? Wow! That's cool. It's them, huh? The flotilla refugee fleet. All supplies. Getting the necessary supplies to each ship to meet their needs is a huge task. Joining the hauling teams is the simplest thing you can help do to help. Or damage control. The wave hit systems more than anything especially those on the ships, so there's a thousand tiny repair jobs to be done. Wow! Indeed, right? Flotilla's friend. Shifting ships, systems, and social structures. The only way to navigate the flotilla is by rolling up your sleeves and helping out. The only thing for me to do? Alright. They're both repeatable. Got 
got two ones, and then I got two twos. I only actually finished it. I wasn't expecting to finish it today. Well, I got two. Soul. Beacon soul, huh? Oh, that's the briar, huh? As you walk into the bay of the climbing briar, the familiarity of the space overcomes any trepidation. It feels good to be back, and the return feels earned, especially after all the work it took to figure out a route through the flotilla's jumble of ships that might lead you to this blue streak. You see Esh and Peek immediately, sitting at the back of the bay, deep in conversation. Their closeness causes you to stop, suddenly aware that you might be interrupting something private. Peek is gesturing wildly as Esh stares out into the middle distance, hunched over. As Peek tries to get her attention, she spots you. Leaper! She, Esh nods. Incredible work back there! She smiles. Sorry I couldn't wait for you and Peek, but the moment I saw the cordon go down, I had to get in here. Peek shakes their head. Vaping before looking, as usual. Peek smiles. But I'm glad we are all reunited. Be honest, Peek adds. I can't believe it. The flux event knocked the entire cordon system offline. The flotilla is free and Haven Age are backing off. Peek smiles at you. You must be our good luck charm. Flux event? That's what the refugees are calling it, Peek explains. Apparently that's what they called it when it started happening around Ember. What? No flux events or what's going on? What exactly is happening? Hard to tell. It's some kind of disruptive wave that only affects electrical systems. Big chips in. Typically, systems are screened against radiation and interference. But this seems to be dulled, but not stopped by those defenses. Basically, the crisis continues. The cordon may be down, but this brings a whole other set of problems. Esh paces away. You should tell them, Esh. Peek glances at her. Please. Esh doesn't respond. Tell you what? You stare at her back, waiting for a response. Please, Esh. Haven't they shown they can be trusted? Peek nods towards you. Esh turns, her arms folded tightly across her chest. She goes to start and then stops. You can see the anger in her eyes, but you realize it is not directed at you or at anyone else. She is angry with herself. I brought weapons to the flotilla. She pauses. And now they are gone. You mean like those explosives? You suddenly remember the sleek crates that were tucked into the bay, marked with a yellow sigil. The ones Esh told you were just supplies. What do you mean, gone? What do you think? Esh snaps. Someone lifted them from the ship's bay while I was unloading the supplies. He sniffs. At least they are in the hands of the flotilla now. Eek looks at you. She knows this was a bad move, sleeper. I promise you. They glance back to her. Act back at her. She is just too proud to admit it. Where did you get them from? XPR. Esh gestures around the ship. I wasn't about to leave the colony armed when we escaped. I wouldn't trust them not to use them on us. Big sighs. I didn't know a thing about them, which is why Esh is going to be the one to find them and bring them back. Shouldn't we help? Esh turns. It's okay, sleeper. I don't want anyone getting mixed up in this. This is my responsibility. She looks away. Plus, Peek adds, you and I have work to do. I want to understand the flux, sleeper, to study it. Peek's eyes light up. This thing is changing the entire system, causing problems across the inner system, driving refugees off Ember's moons, and now it's here. If we don't do something about it, Peek pauses, it's a problem for all of us. I can see more immediate problems, Esh sniffs. Peek ignores her. I've been looking at the networks, and when the flux event hit, it changed things. It shuffled systems, 
corrupted nodes and broke open data stores. Wait, wait, wait. Corrupted nodes, right? Corrupted. I take out a slate and show you a flickering polygon. Some of these flexed nodes have appeared near the epicenter of the event, but I can't get access. You, however, I saw the way you worked with data when we were preparing for the run. I think you can get into these things. I want you to find a flexed node and bring me anything you can extract. They come and go, but most can be found in the barely functioning networks of the wastes. He pauses. Start there. Perhaps together we can find something that might point us to what the flux is and where it comes from. Okay. I mean, he's already said how that will, might help. They smile. I knew you'd agree. Esh looks indignant. Don't waste too much time chasing ghosts, sleeper. There are people on this flotilla that need any help they can get. I'm sure sleeper can do both, Esh. Peek smiles at you. I'll see you here when, when you have something. Good hunting. And they, make, and they wave you out as Esh stomps away to make plans of her own. Wow. Climbing Briar escaped XPR ship. Deliver flux data. He asked you to help them extract data from a node in the wastes. One that appeared after the recent flux event. They don't have a time limit this time. I don't like time limits. Dot dot dot. What? You didn't like my... Corruption? You didn't like the corruption? Why not? Wasn't it perfect? No. Screw you. Let's talk to Sol. Pragmatic captain of the flotilla, I presume. The flotilla, chaotic refugee fleet. Someone told me I should be thanking you. The voice comes from behind you, cutting through the chaos of the crowded, cavernous bay. You freeze. Don't be afraid now. I've been hunting you, sure, but for all the best reasons. You turn to see bright eyes set in a rough face, framed in rusted metal. Damn, what's with the outfit, dude? Are you okay? You're like practically half robot. Oh, he holds out his hand. The other clamped firmly around a knotted wooden crate. I'll shake his hand. He grips you firmly with a heavy and calloused hand. Forgive me. As soon as I saw you, I knew who you were. Bill puts a hand on your shoulder. I've been told a sleeper was part of that supply run that came in several cycles ago. He nods. A very welcome act, and we all thank you for it. Walk with me, sleeper. Thul sets off through the bay, his partial suit hissing and creaking as it helps carry him through the busy crowds. You notice people making way for you and Sol, standing back and letting you pass. You pass a makeshift kitchen, steaming pots on heating elements, a restless queue collecting meals. That algae that came through isn't exactly a full meal, but with what we have here, we've been able to make it work. You see a ladle of a greenish stew dished out. The color is something, isn't it? Thul smiles. Thul leads you out of the larger bay into a corridor lined with storage rooms that are now serving as dorms. You see someone filling a metal container from a standpipe, the water gushing out readily. Thul nods to the person as he passes. Hey, Kokoro Buns. What's up? What's happening? How's it going? How you doing tonight? If you say so. Man, you give me the dot dot dots if you say so. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Just a little further now. Bill leads you into a freight elevator and whistles to some unseen operator to start it up. It jerks into life and as you pass through the layers of the ship, you can see on every level supplies cramped into every available space and sparks leaping into bur and bursts as the ship is reshaped and modified to sustain its population. If Haven Age were expecting an exodus from the flotilla, the flux event has put a stop to that. Thull stretches. Some have crossed the eye, but many just to gather salvage or score a hot meal. So, the pressure on our supplies is shrinking, but not like I'd hoped. With the flux reaching all the way out here, people are starting to understand that our journey might not be over. Thul stares grimly ahead. Suddenly, the freight elevator screeches to a halt, and Sol leads you slowly out into a wide room of chairs and terminals, 
ringed by a mezzanine and with a glass roof above showing the distant hub and the far curb of the eye beyond. The people at the terminals nod to him as he enters. Doing good? How about you? I'm doing pretty well. We pretty much finished the main story of the Citizen Sleeper, I believe, and now I'm doing the DLC! For a little bit longer, anyway. It's almost time to end. What am I supposed to do? You're supposed to be, like, super encouraging or something. I don't know. Something captainly. I'm sure you can think of it. This is your ship? Gold nods. That's right. The pilgrim seed is mine to care for. He leads you up to a railed platform at the center of the room and stops. She chose me, so to speak. Well, at least her crew did. And I do my best to serve them. Or serve them. Soul looks around the bridge of the ship, a pained expression on his face. I'll admit that the responsibility isn't one that suits me. Though we barely get to choose such things. He glances back at you. But you, sleeper, from what I understand, you chose to try to help us here. Is that right? I did my best to. Soul nods silently. But I have to ask you, sleeper, why are you here now? Soul leans back, and you feel his eyes on you, assessing you. A flux event. I still want to help. I want to know more. I want to know about the flux event. I appreciate the honesty. I had figured as much. Soul flexes the shoulder that is free of the suit. Looking at you now, I can see that in an event like that, well, it would have had a big impact. He smiles a half smile. I have thousands of people here on the Pilgrim Seed, sleeper, and there's thousands more out in the flotilla. He leans against a railing. A lot of them are looking to me to provide some future for them, some path out of this dead end we've got into. And this cycle, this very cycle, the thing we've been running away from, it just caught up with us. But these people are scared, sleeper, and they are looking to me for reassurance. And then, oh wait, wait, oh wait, and then, I thought, I thought I was, I thought it was like repeating. And then on the same cycle, someone tells me they see you on board, a sleeper. The same sleeper, they reckon, that wanted so strongly to send a ship past the cordon to see us. Little scratches at his beard. So the first thing I wanted to do was thank you for that, for your interest. He pauses. But the second thing I wanted to do was find out what you want from us. Little suit hisses and creaks. I think that's fair, don't you? Little takes a deep breath. So what is it? Uh, what's happening around Ember? Someone at the terminal calls out to Sol, and he shouts some orders back. He turns to you. Apologies, he smiles that half-smile. I tell you what, sleeper, let's you and me make a deal. You want information? I understand that. But I have a list of needs longer than the rim of the eye itself. He grimaces. So you do some things for me, and then we can talk about what's been happening in this system. And I will answer all of your questions, and then some. I may be the captain of the Pilgrim Seed, and she is certainly the biggest ship in this flotilla. But I'm not the only captain here. We have ships here from each of the moons. We're from Ember's Hearth. But there's others from Ember's Song and even Ember's Step. The moons have been at each other's throats, sleeper. What with the pressure of the flux. The bad blood from the old days. So leads in. We aren't exactly all in alignment. Humans never get along, man. Not even when they're running away from dangerous things. Monsters could be knocking at your doorstep and you're still gonna be fighting over stupid bullshit from the old days, man. What I need is a way to stop things escalating. For the crews on these ships and their captains to feel happy and comfortable enough to forget old rivalries and past crimes. He flinches at something. Those from Ember's Step. Well, they've always been proud. But that pride seems to be a barrier to compromise right now. The last set of supplies I sent their way? 
They refused. Meanwhile, I have a supply shuttle at the docking axis the Ember Song ships gather at. But they have taken far too many cycles to unload. Maybe if you are heading that way, you can look in on them. I'm no politician, sleeper. But if I don't... Bull stops. He leans back and flexes, his suit screeching. He groans a little, and you see the weight of the flotilla sitting on his shoulders. The suit the only thing keeping him vertical beneath all that pressure. Look, you'll, look, you'll see for yourself if you go. Meet the others, sleeper. Do what they need. Keep them aligned. He speaks through the pain, his voice clipped. I mean, he's obviously not okay, since he needs that suit to probably even walk properly. Are you okay? I'll ask anyway. Not really, but as long as this thing holds, he grimaces. I hope. Soul grits his teeth. You are what you appear to be, sleeper. He smiles his half-smile, despite the pain. Because I'm not sure I can take any more bad news. Plus, there's plenty to be done here on the Pilgrim Seed, too. If you have a moment to pitch in. There's never enough around here. That's something I've learned the hard way. Soul settles onto his cane, the pain visibly receding. Alright, I have a thousand things to attend to now, sleeper. So you'll have to find your own way out. And with that, Soul sits at his terminal with slow and careful movements. You head back down in the freight elevator. And as you do, you see again the layers and layers of chaotic life this vessel and all the vessels of the flotilla hold. Wow, a new drive discovered. Look at all these things I can do now. Oh, the only thing I can really do today is this Aki one. See docking axis ember song hub. Unload supplies. Soul shipment of supplies sits partially unloaded, the crew absent. If you want to help, the best way would be to finish the job. Unfinished business! The more you offload supplies into the docking bay, the more attention your efforts seem to be gaining. That sounds pretty nice. Yeah, they want Flux de Tol. Pilgrim Seed, Ember Hearth's refugee ship. Let's see what we got here. Pilgrim Seed Support. Even Soul's own ship requires help. But figuring out what jobs need doing first and who to help is a challenge. Pilgrim Seed Supply. Food is an issue on the Pilgrim Seed, even with agriculture on board. The supply of Matsutake will help fill the gap. Huh. Earth Survival is like halfway filled already. Interesting. Step Song and Hearth. Debilitating the flotilla means relieving the pressure on the refugees from all three moons of Ember. Earth survival. Whether Esh got her supplies through the cordon or not, Pilgrim Seed and the hearth refugees on it desperately need help. Oh, so if I... Depending on how well I did in episode one of the DLC, probably determines how far along this circle is filled. But because I managed to do everything in time, it's halfway done. That's pretty cool. Possibly, if that's if that if that's the reason why it's halfway filled, I think it is. But you, know. you have nothing encouraging. Oh, that sounds pretty encouraging. Let's see who Aki is. Ember Step Refugee. Flotilla ship. A ship in the refugee flotilla. It's a strange sight, given your time spent in the greenway, to see a greenhouse choked in red dust. It piles up along edges, gathers in curving waves, and is carried by some unseen wind to whirl in front of the glass ceiling. It is a desert in miniature, a captured landscape of iron-rich sediment and unseen life. Beautiful, isn't it? The re remark comes from another figure standing at the viewing window. So quietly that you hadn't noticed them. Did they just arrive, or were they here before you were? Their cloth-swaddled form reveals little. It is. They say nothing. You catch a glimpse of a pale face among the thick material. 
dark eyes glittering in the red reflected light. I mean, uh, uh, it's, it, they uh, they got some fancy outfit there. No, it doesn't. Stop being dumb. That's a tall order. That's a big request you got from me there. Aki guarded the ember step refugee. They turn as the dust swirls. Aki! They smile a tight smile. You are not from the flotilla, am I right? Uh, I live on the eye. But that is not where you are from. He stares into the greenhouse. Everyone is from somewhere, whether they wish to be or not. The red dust glitters in her eyes, whether it is a good place to be from or not. Aki gathers her cloak around her shoulders. Against the cold. What brings you to the wind's long shadow? Wind's long shadow? This ship. Aki looks at you curiously. Do you often wander around ships you don't know the name of? Yes. You are a strange one. Aki raises an eyebrow. I don't know whether to report you or send you back to where you came from. She smiles to herself. Which is nowhere at all. Glance around the empty corridor, suddenly aware of how quiet it is on the ship. Unlike the other ships you have been on, the flotilla there is a silent order to the wind's long shadow, and in this moment it feels unsettling. What happened here? Aki squints. That is a broad question, and I am not in the mood to recount the history of this ship, or step. Step? Aki turns away, irritated, eager to change the subject. You hear a creak as a set of shutters slowly begin to close across the glass ceiling of the greenhouse. As you watch, you feel the dissonance this place has with that word. There is nothing green here. A dust house, perhaps. Ha <laughs> ha! It, it takes many systems to preserve this landscape, Aki begins, to simulate the wind, cycle the dust. Layer the sand and dirt beneath. You watch the dust swirling. Systems that are failing. The flux event. Aki glances at you for a sign of recognition at this term. Is eroding our ability to keep this place alive. To keep these traces of step alive. She smiles to herself. They're trying to deliberately simulate a desert environment? That's kind of interesting. I wonder why. Why you do that? You can't grow a whole lot of food in a desert environment. Which is ironic, because when we left Step, the Flux had eroded our ability to survive on the moon. Now the situation is reversed. Away from the moon, its ecosystems are as fragile as we were, living upon it. Something catches your eyes. The shutters darken the dust house. The winds, picking away at the dunes, begin to reveal something. A web, a network of thick branching forms, and then they close completely, and you see nothing in the dark. Soft blue lights flicker on in the corridor, uplighting Aki and cold Scion. You have piqued my curiosity, but I'm so tired. Aki shivers. If you do not have a purpose here on the ship, I recommend finding one. Otherwise, I'm afraid you'll need to leave. <gasps> Make yourself useful, and perhaps we will get another chance to talk. He turns. I would like that. With that, Aki pads away along the corridor. You stand for a moment in front of the dark dust house, trying to imagine the network of roots under the sand and dust, and then trying to imagine the moon that once housed them. Dust houses! Ember step facility. We've got here systems repair. The crew won't let you in to the dust houses, but there are plenty of supporting systems that could do with some love and care. Make yourself useful. Aki warned you that if you wanted to learn more about the Wind's Long Shadow, you'll need to prove your usefulness. Interesting. Whoa! The 
This node flickers in and out. Its position is shifting slightly each time. Wow! Interesting. I'd say that's about all we're doing today. We can continue this mystery of uh, going in citizen sleeper next week, right? What's going on with this flux thing? What's happening? What's what what? Why why are people running? Why can't we just fix the flux thing? What what's going on? Stare. I know. I just I just kicked butt there, right? I'm amazing. Nothing else I can do today, so. So we'll rest so we save and then we good. Bum, 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 bum. It saved! At least I don't have a time limit this time. Funny I only needed two scrap to be able to access the flotilla. I needed fucking eight scrap in the first chapter of this DLC. Feels like the second one's more generous. It should have been like, we need 16 scrap now. Get good. It's gonna be it for today, though. We will continue the Flux Trapdoor. Wait, which one is this one? Refuge? We finished the Flux is the first chapter, wasn't it? We'll continue this next time. Maybe we'll beat all the DLCs and finish the game next time. Who knows? Who knows? We will see. Maybe, maybe not. I think two more streams tops, though. I don't know if we'll finish next time. I think two more tops. And this game will be done. Depends on how long these uh, DLCs are. We'll see, we'll see. That first one wasn't too long, though. It was basically just the mission of supplying. And then we went over, and that was it. If you weren't reading everything out, it'd take you like 30 minutes. <laughs> you were just going click, 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 click. Oh, what? Even the refugees don't like one another? That's kind of humanity. We could have, like, aliens invade tomorrow, and we would still fight over stupid shit. Who has the right to take out the aliens? Wait, 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 wait. Uh, no, I deserve the alien supplies. Um, yeah, I mean, no, uh, We would still fight over stupid bullshit. A giant asteroid could hit tomorrow and wipe out everyone except for like 10 people and the final 10 people of humanity would still fight over stupid bullshit i i demand more food than you yeah why should i have to share and bullshit like that that's just humanity man we will always find reasons to argue apparently we're just greedy motherfuckers Greedy. <laughs> I need according to Ash, the government from the station drawn is complete garbage for not letting them all in. Well, it's a moral thing, right? It's morally right to let them in. You can't deny that. It's more it's morally the or ethically the correct thing to do. Despite, despite the fact that it would add strain to their own systems and their own po already existing population, yes. Like I said, complicated, not not black and white situation. Ideally, you'd want to uh, uh, be able to support them to go somewhere else. They could go or increase your own systems to uh, support everybody or something like that. Or maybe a bit of both or something. It's not a simple solution, though. He's pretty black and white to her. Yeah, she's stubborn. She's stubborn. Someone stole her explosives now. Her weapons. She's done fucked up. Someone who might, you know, use them. 
I've stolen her. I've stolen them from her. She needs to get them back. I wish her luck with that. I don't know if she's gonna get them back. We'll find out next time. Where'd my cool music go? There's like no music. There was some music and then no music. Me. That's it for today, though. That's enough sitos on sleeper for today. That's enough sitos on sleeper for today. We will continue sitos on sleeper again next week. And I, well, I will fulfill it. Depends on how long it takes to get through the rest of the story. And then get the uh, three other achievements I missed. We'll see, we'll see. I think that ending of going back following the thread was pretty sappy, though. That was a good ending. It was sappy! Goodbye forever. That's right. Goodbye forever and ever. That was a hip hopping and bopping, popping stream. This is totally it for tonight. Sure. Ruffle wink. That's right. Hip hopping and bopping, popping. So excited. Very exciting Citizen Sleeper stream. That's a, that's a, that's a very cool. I'm back next week for more Citizen Sleeper. Perhaps we will finish it next time. We'll see. <laughs>